morning. Welcome to the Sun Quarter with me, Vicky Gordon. It's great to be back, especially with a double whammy of guests. We've got some brilliant, brilliant makes for you today, including da -da -da -da, a lot of dressmaking. Julia Fallon's going to be here. Uh, a lady from my home, well, I say my hometown, the next hometown from me. And I've actually, it's the first time I've met Julia, but I've been recommended by so many people to go to Julia for my dressmaking courses. So I'm really, really excited to have a very own little demo with her later on. Uh, in fact, she's going to be here uh, this first hour. Let's have a look. Eight o'clock, Julia uh, Fallon is going to be here with the Coatagon. Not a coat or a cardigan, the Coatagon. I love that. 9 a.m., the Liberty sewing set with the par part of the furniture, Lucy Brennan. She's back. 10 a.m., New Julia's dress and top, brand new patterns in that hour. And 11 a.m., everybody has been asking for the Creative Grid Pineapple Ruler, the big one. I know we've had the mini one, but we've got a brand new created Creative Grid with Lucy Brennan. So please, please, please do get in touch with us if you've got any pictures or if you've got any messages or if you've got any questions, then definitely, definitely get in touch. And I can, of course, ask our experts live on air. This is how you get in touch. You can either uh, get in touch via our website. If you click watch at the top there, scroll down, past where, it'll come up in a minute, there you go. Uh, scroll down past where you watch live. On the right hand side, it'll say message the studio. You can just send a short and sweet message into the studio and my producer, Paul, will be able to send that straight through. Say hello, it's Vix today. What are you writing? And tomorrow, yes, I'm here today and tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, please do say hello to me. It's lovely to always have your, uh, your encouragement, so thank you very much. Send in your pictures to our email address, studio at sewingquarter.com. Com, studio at sewingquarter.com. So as I say, we have got so much to do today. Can we show a picture of the coat again? Not yet, <laughs> but we will be able to show you. This first hour, we're making the most gorgeous, gorgeous coat again. In fact, Julia came in wearing one this morning. You've probably seen uh, pictures of one before. I know that she's seen it with, uh, with, with John Scott, but it is absolutely fabulous. We've got lots of dressmaking going on. And they are... Julia's very own patterns, which are exceptional, very, very comprehensive. And I just love them. I think these would make a really, really lovely gift. So this, I remember when the fabric that we're going to be using uh, for this make came in and everybody went crazy for it. I was actually in the office with Jennifer Taylor and she bought some there and then. She said she'd bought some before from the show and she said, I've got to get more, I've got to get more because I love it. I know that she's made this jumper. so. We have the T-shirt or jumper. Uh, it depends what fabric you use, I suppose. You could have it as a, a more lightweight one, or if you use the, the quilted fabric that we've got, uh, it's more of a, a jumper. But anyway, this one is incredibly limited, incredibly limited. The Julia pattern is limited. It's 16 pounds, and it's very, very comprehensive with all of your patterns and all of your instructions in there. We also have the Bianca, so this is your coat again. Uh, this is even more limited, I'm being told, even more limited. So this is the lovely waterfall collar. Uh, and inside, again, you have so much. I can talk you through everything with Julia that you get inside the instructions, but all your instructions, all your patterns, uh, and lots to learn and lots to do. And it says, Beginners, beginners plus on this one, but beginners on the uh, the t-shirt. So great for anybody that's starting out dressmaking or wanting a bit more of a, a fast make. There it is. I just love that big collar. It looked fabulous on Julia when she walked in at six o'clock this morning. For the larger size, you will need two and a half meters, whether you're looking at either pattern. So whether you're looking at the, uh, the t-shirt or, or the coat. Let's have a look at the fabrics because this is the one that I was talking about. This is your jersey fabric and the pink is gorgeous, especially because it is double sided as well. Not only have you got this lovely quilted pattern on the front, you've also got the stripes. So you can do it either way you want. I know that uh, the one that's been on the mannequin, we've done this way, but I think Julia's actually gonna demo it the stripe away. 50% cotton and 50% polyester. 
150 centimeters wide, so you've got a great width on there. Uh, so that's the pink, 5.99, and you will need two and a half meters for the larger size. That's the maximum you'll need to make either of these. The dark gray, dark gray and yellow. Again, just 5 .99. It's lovely, you know this time of year, I've been sitting outside, we've been very lucky, well, I don't know where the summer's gone now, but uh, this morning it was very, very gray, but it's really, it's still a bit bitter, it's been lovely, but when you go outside on the evening, you're having your barbecue, you just want something to just throw on. Uh, this is perfect, 5 .99, lovely weight to it. And the other side, as I say, is the stripey, stripey, so it is double-sided. That's cool, isn't it? 5.99 for the dark gray and yellow. The last jersey colorway we have is blue. This is probably the one I'd go for. It's navy blue and pink. There's your navy blue. Also with the pink stripe. Oh, it just feels so lovely. It's ever so soft as well. 5.99, the largest size, uh, for the largest size on either of the patterns, all you need is two and a half meters. That's the most amount of fabric you'll need. Okay, now for the coat again, if you want to have a go at the lovely coat, which you've just seen, I mean, we do, we've seen it in the green, we've got lots of options though for the boiled wool. Let's go for the light gray. This is gonna go with everything, isn't it? This is gonna go with everything. And as I said, it just looked great. When Julie walked in, it was horrible and windy and rainy outside this morning, six o'clock, she looked fabulous. Can you hear the rain coming down? So for the coat, two and a half meters is the maximum amount of fabric that you're going to need. So that's 11.99 for the light gray. The next one is ecru. Fact, how perfect is this for this time of year? It's like a blanket, isn't it, the board? Well, it's lovely. Uh, this is in fact the one that we're going to demo with. This is 11.99 for half a meter. Maximum you're going to need is two and a half meters. But if there is a particular size that you want to make, I will be able to tell you how much you need. So message in, 11.99 for half a meter. So it goes up like normal, half meter increments. The most that you're going to need though is two and a half meters. If you like a bit of wine, Maybe this one's for you. Sort of, that is really nice, isn't it? That's gonna take you all year round, quite autumnal colors. 11.95, half a meter, dark gray. We've got so much to do, so I just, I'm flying through these now. We've got taupe, it's actually cool. This is the darker gray of the two. There we are. Same price again, 11.99. You have got to be fast though to get these last, if you after the patterns, they are extremely limited now. I do, I do want to warn you, they are very, very limited. And the last one is the one that you actually saw on the mannequin. This is the olive. I'm not gonna tell you the jokes in my ear. You can guess, can't you? I love this, 11.99. I can't believe I just stooped down to Paul's level and said that, it wasn't my joke, it was, uh, <laughs> it was Paul's. <laughs> okay, just before we start, we've got an offer as well on an overlocker. We've got an overlocker bundle. Here it is, we can show you, um, we can show you a picture of it. 269 pounds, brilliant, brilliant offer today. It's actually a saving of 31 pounds, 49 pence with free Black thread, thread, you get four of those as well. So we are limited on the overlocker. I know last time Julie were here, we had a lot of our collectors, a lot of our buyers um, taking advantage of the deal on the overlocker. So do make the most of that. If you're after an overlocker, now is the time to go for it. We also have a brand new machine. Always trying to get hold of brand new machines. You don't find these very often. It's not something that you see very often. And it's just to give you that next level of professional finish. This really, really will take all of your designs and all of your projects, all, all of your dressmaking to that next level. If you want any information about it, then please, please, please do get in touch with us. If you've got any questions, our customer service team are absolutely fantastic. They really, really are fantastic. So if you've got any questions, then ask away. Hello, 
hello, hello. Lovely to see you. And you. Lovely to finally meet you. I say, I've heard <laughs> so much about you oh. from our area. I know that you um, have a fantastic shop in Stratford, and a lot of people have recommended me, oh, um, recommended you to come. Um, Thank you. For me to come and meet you. So. We've got some lovely, lovely patterns today, haven't we? Yes. We've seen, I believe, this one on air before, haven't we? And have yes. we done the coat We've seen both of them, actually. Yes, they've right. both been on air. So okay. it's quite nice to have a little recap, really. And these are absolutely beautiful, beautifully um, presented as well, Thank aren't you. they? Really Thank lovely. You. So they'd make a nice gift for somebody. They would they? actually, yes. And when we send them out, um, well, you know, they all come lovely packaged and yeah. with a nice little postcard and yeah, they're packaged with love. Yes, they really are. So what are we going to be doing today then? I'm going to give you a quick recap on the Julia top. Okay. Um, because it's quite good to know how to go around corners with an overlocker. Right. Um, which can be a little bit tricky, but um, with a little few tricks, then it is, makes it a little bit easier. And then we're also going to do the Bianca coat as well. Okay, brilliant. So we've got a lot to do. A yes. lot to do in the next 45 Busy minutes. Morning. So go for it. Lovely. Where do we start? So this, I've kind of half made one just to kind of get you started. But what I wanted to show was how the pockets work. Mm -hmm. Because when you cut it out, it looks a bit weird on the fabric because you've got a massive great big hole here. Yeah which looks a bit odd. <laughs> yeah. And when you're cutting it in half, you've kind of got, you've got your pattern piece on the fabric and mm -hmm. then there's this big square cut out of it, which right. looks a bit weird, but it does work. So what we've done, what I've done with half of it here is to pleat up the bottom part of the top so that you've got these little, actually, if I tuck that out of the way. Yeah, then you can see the little tabs. That's it. So it looks a bit like tabs, like a pair of curtains, really, mm -hmm. you know, the tab-headed curtains. So what we've done with this is to actually overlock around the corners. So I've done one so that you can have a quick look and see what it looks like there. Um, again, we've got all the little tails, but we'll snip those off. Um, but you can see how you can get quite nice and close actually mm -hmm. around the corners there. Mm. So um, there is a trick to that, okay. which I can show you. It does just give that really professional it finish, does, doesn't yes. it? I mean, you don't have to have an overlocker when you're working with Jersey. Um, but gosh, it makes it so quick. Okay. I mean, I can run one of these up in an hour. That's and we've, crazy, yeah, we have them as a, a workshop and it's three hours, which is brilliant. So I'm going to show you how to go around corners. So I'm not even going to pin. I know it goes against the grain. Yeah. But what we're going to do, and one of my favourite things, is actually using your fingers as pins. Okay, then. So, and this fabric's really nice to work with, actually. It's very well behaved. Um, it kind of, I don't know, if you're of a certain age, you'll remember something called fuzzy felt. Right. And it kind of sticks it to sticks itself. It sticks together, yeah. Yeah, so it's really nice to so work with. It's not going to slip. That's the no. thing, is that it always... I know people worry about yeah. whether it's going to slip or it's going to stretch or anything like yeah. that. But actually, this fabric, because it's a double jersey as well, mm -hmm. is a really nice one to work with. I love that it's reversible. I know, it's, it's so really cool, nice, isn't it? yeah. So I'm going to line this up on the overlocker. What I'm going to do is just run on to where I've Finish, just yeah. finished. And to do that, I'm going to lift the foot up at the back and slide it into place. So what I'm doing is lining up the blade with the cut edge that I've already stitched. Okay. And then I'm going to pop the foot back down. And then you kind of run on. So there we go. I'm just going to dab the pedal as well. There. Now I'm making sure that both the edges are level and they're just sitting over the edge of the plate. And that way I know I'm going to be doing the right seam. So would you recommend for me to pin it or not? No, no overlockers and pins don't go okay. together. Right, OK. The risk that you run is that you're going to get your pin stuck under the blade. Right. And that's not a good look, no, really. No. So, yeah, damage your pins, damage your blade and, yeah. You, most of the time, with your packs, you will have spare ones, mm -hmm. so that's okay. So if it does go wrong, then it's not a major issue, so it's fine. You haven't broken the machine. Okay. So what we're going to do is just dab the pedal again, just to make sure that you get a bit of control. Now, also, what I wanted to point out on these machines here, I don't know if you can see, but there are little tiny marks on the front here. Okay, I don't know if we can turn it. that round. Yeah. Just here you've got little solid lines and dotted lines. Now these give you the seam allowance guide. Right, okay. So the so dotted line, line yeah, exactly. It makes it really easy. Your dotted line is actually where your left needle is and the solid line is where your right needle is. So you've got a really clear idea as to how 
bigger seam allowance you're sewing. So we're doing a centimetre today. And, okay, this is the tricky bit. This is the cool bit. So as we're coming up to the corner, you kind of think, oh, yeah, no. Yeah, I need I'm to gonna, stop. Yeah, but what we do, again, if you dab the pedal, you've got a lot more control over the machine. So I'm just going to dab it. And as soon as I'm getting really close here, so that you can see you're just about to cut into the next bit of fabric, what I'm going to do is to bend that round. So we're kind of squishing it. And the other thing that's really useful to have is a pair of tweezers. So you'll get these in with your pack with the machine as well. And I'm making sure that I'm just holding that little bit just so the blade catches that. And we're kind of squidging it round so that it sits under the blade and you carry on. So yeah, you've made that look very, very easy. <laughs> Do you know, it's worth practicing yeah. actually, just having a go with. The other nice thing with an overlocker is you just let it run off. So you can see there, we've gone round, we've gone round the corner. Perfect. So that's quite a nice one. I'm just going to do the other side yeah, now, just brilliant. to finish off that part. Now, so you say this is a really quick make as well? It really is, yeah. It does work brilliantly. So again, all I'm going to do is to bend it round. And just keep and let going. it run off. Mm. There we go. So we've actually got both of the pockets done now. And this is all in the instructions, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. The instructions are absolutely lovely. So you get the patterns and step by step. I mean, this is a really comprehensive. We take a lot of time working yeah. out our instructions. Yeah. Um, and we've got a really fantastic group of uh, pattern testers yeah. who certainly let us know if there's anything wrong, well, I mean, you, which is brilliant, you, were, you know. You have done this for years and years and years and years and years. You, so you've been cutting patterns for over 20 years. Gosh, yes, yeah. yeah. See, it's amazing, isn't it? It's such a skill. It it's really good fun, actually. Yeah. I love it. Um, and pattern cutting is one of my favorite things to teach, I have to say. So what we've done then is got, we've got the pocket. So when you fold that down, you've actually got the oh, two pockets nice. that go yeah. in like that. And I love that they're just very sort of subtle. You wouldn't really know that they're no, there. they're kind yeah. of, yeah. Just hidden. Now, the other thing that you can do is um, make this up in woven fabric as well. Okay. So you don't, it doesn't have to be made in jersey. As long as you've got jersey to go around the neckband and the cuffs, yeah. then it's fine. You might want to cut a slightly bigger size on the sleeve mm -hmm. um, because it won't give that stretch yeah. and it's quite a tight fit. You can see from yeah. the one on the stand yeah. there, it's quite a tight fit. So what I've done as well is I've stitched one of the shoulders together already. So you can see you've got the front starting to kind of become attached to the back there. Mm -hmm. And I've also stitched in one of the sleeve heads. Now I'm going to do the other shoulder. Now this is tele sewing, so it's a bit quick. Yeah. <laughs> so normally what you do is you would have uh, some tape or some full flex or something like that just to stop that shoulder from stretching. Okay. Because although we want it to be kind of stretchy and comfortable everywhere, everywhere else, you don't really want the shoulder seams to stretch out. So normally you'd have a little bit of tape. But just for but time, for we're tele not going sewing, to. Yeah. what we're going to do is just, just whip that through it. quickly and then I can show you how. There we go. You can just see how quick this is. And again, all I'm doing is just using fingers as pins. It just stays put. And let it run. There you go. There we go. Oh, sorry. It's that easy. So what I'm going to do is be a good girl and snip all mm -hmm. of my threads off because they do get in the way. So now that bit's ready to have the sleeve put in. And I've done that in exactly the same way. So that one's there. Right. Once you've got your sleeve in, yeah. you're then going to do the side seams. And this is the super quick. So once you've done that bit, you don't have to. People think sleeves are really difficult. Yeah. They're really not. They're really not. I would find difficult knowing what part is what part so you're saying right this bit's the sleeve this bit's this and it's, I'd be sewing the arm to the the bottom and not it's the navigate yeah the navigation. navigating round it yeah. yeah if you kind of you can shake it out there we go so if I shake it out yeah you, you can then see how 
it all kind of fits together. So it's yeah, starting to go. look like yeah, a shape yeah, now. Yeah. So you've got your neckline and your shoulder and your sleeve and what have you. I mean, if you did it this way as well, it, it looks oh, completely yes. different, doesn't yes. it? Uh, that was my original intention. Yeah. But clearly I haven't had enough coffee this morning. <laughs> so I was just on autopilot and did it the normal way yeah. around. Yeah. But that's fine. It still works. Yeah. So what we'd want to do then is to do that seam all the way up. So you can match up your hems at the bottom and then we'll just do a quick zip all the way through and I'll show you then how to attach the cuff. It is just doing the same. Yeah, it's just, just nothing too tricky. No, that really, really this. isn't. Yeah, this is actually a very, very straightforward one to now, do. Now, which way would you bend your seam now, at this point? Now, that would need to go down. So what you can do is use your tweezers again yeah. because you don't really want your fingers to get too close mm -hmm. to that blade. Now, you can also, a nice thing is lift up the toe oh, yeah. just to make sure it's going to get sit nice and flat under there. There we go. To be perfectly honest, if it does go the other way, it's it not going to be the end it. of the world. This is why this fabric is so forgiving. It's really, really lovely to work with. So when you come to a bend, in a similar way to uh, going around the corners, what we're going to do is to kind of pivot. Mm -hmm. So you use your left hand flat on the fabric and just pivot that round out the way so that it follows the line of the curve. Right, OK. So it keeps it nice and easy. I'm trying to keep those two underarm seams there matched yeah, nicely. up. So we're just going to bend and pivot that around. There we go. Again, you can use your tweezers just to tuck those in together. And once you get over the lump of the seam, you're there. There we go. Again, I'm just making sure that the ends are nice and level. Mm -hmm. And if they do want to kind of just sit out a little bit, what you can do is then just pull them so that they're straight. Because mm -hmm. again, you've got that flexibility within the jersey fabric. We've got about five minutes. This one. Lovely. Yeah, coat again as well. That's brilliant. So that's your sleeve done. And then to go there we go. So how easy was that? Really yeah, quick. easy, easy, easy. Really, really quick. And then your sleeve. And would you always use a contrasting thread? No, not necessarily. This is just for telly sewing, yeah, so you yeah. can see it. So obviously you'd want to make sure that you've got a thread that would work with the colour of fabric that yeah. you're using. Um, but when we come to use the cream mm -hmm. boiled wool, that works really nicely when you've with got a contrast, contrast yeah. colour. Yeah. So that's that one. That's so easy. Again, you can turn this around the other way and make it so that you've got the contrast. Yeah. Yes. If you see on the, uh, the mannequin how I've done the cuffs as the contrasting reverse, it works really well, doesn't it? There you go. That looks great. So again, your cuff is just whipped up really quickly. Oh, this is great, isn't it? It cuts it all and just makes it look so oh, professional. Do you know what? The, the Love Your Overlocker workshop that we run is yeah. our most popular workshop. Yeah. And once people have used them, yeah, they would that's back, it. Yeah. You are totally hooked. Yeah. And they will take your sewing up to a completely new level. It makes it look so much more professional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's so much quicker than having to um, sew zigzag yeah. or yeah. pink the edges yeah. or anything like that. And it just makes, makes your garments last longer yeah. as well once yeah, they go exactly, through the wash. Yeah. So yeah. There we go. So I've just stitched that, folded it back on itself. And I'm going to snip those threads off because they can, do get in the way. Now, all we're going to do with this, this is stitching in the round. Mm -hmm. So we're going to tuck that inside. So that your seams match up. OK. Now, I've, yeah, look. Spot the deliberate mistake. See, I clearly haven't had enough coffee this morning. And <laughs> I've stitched right, it around right, the right way. way. Yeah. But that's fine, because you might not want the contrast, but that's yeah, OK. Yeah, there you go. We've seen the contrast already exactly, anyway, so exactly. let's see what it's like normally. There we go. So that just sits inside there, you can see. So you've got a tube in a tube. OK. There we go. And then what we're going to do is to start just before the seam, so we're not starting right on the seam. So you give the machine a chance to kind of get, get going before it has to go over the the hump of all the seam allowances. 
And it'll cut go. off all of those end little bits. Yeah, absolutely. Bits. Yeah. When it's this thick, you don't really want to cut off too much because it's going to be a little bit of a struggle for it to go through, the blade right. to go through it. But that's the nice thing about the overlocking is that you don't have to cut off too much. So again, I'm just running on. And again, I'm going to use my tweezers just to help to make sure that it gets nice and flat to go underneath the blade. If you find that you're getting anything caught up mm -hmm, underneath mm -hmm. here, what you can do again just is just use your tweezers just to hold that out of the way as it goes. And then you can make sure it doesn't get, because sometimes it can get sucked back up inside, mm -hmm. but this is a really good way to keep it nice and clean. There we go. So again, you're just doing literally a couple of inches at a time. Just keeping it flat and rolling it round mm -hmm. inside. There we go. And when we get back to the beginning again, you're just making sure that you've got all your layers together there. And when you get back to the beginning, you want to overlap just so that you're kind of crossing over your stitching. And then when you get back, you can push it out, pull it out hard to the left and just let it run off. There you go, perfect. And that's it, and that's your sleeve done. Let's turn that If we spin it inside there. out, then we can see what it looks like with the, Actually, not cross it on purpose. That's it, yeah. So you've got it all the same fabric, which actually looks quite nice too. There we yeah. go. Yeah, really nice. Oh, I do love this. Do you know what, it's so snuggly. It really is. There we go. So then all to do is the Yeah, then the you do the, yeah. do the neckband. Yeah, and you do that in exactly the same way as the cuff. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Now also, I must mention that we are bringing a brand yes. new machine today. Have a look at this. So this is a brand new machine. Whilst we just set this up ever so quickly, we're going to go and have a quick look at the, uh, the pattern again and the fabrics. So if... You fancy having a go at making the Julia? I love that they're all named as well. This is the Julia, and it's such a great, easy make. One for beginners if you are new to dressmaking. If you've got an overlocker, if you want a quick and easy make, uh, you do have to start checking out of your basket because it is extremely limited. It is fantastic that you've got all of your comprehensive instructions. You've got all of your lovely pattern pieces as well. Sixteen pounds come so beautifully presented with love. On the back, it will also tell you everything that you're going to need and uh, the sizes. Um, if you have a look, you can see if, if you have to measure and all of the finished sizes, your finished garment sizes as well. Now, the different fabrics, loads of you have got that in your basket. Do make sure you check out the fabric for this, the pink that we're demoing with, over half the stock has gone. Over half the stock has gone. It's so beautifully soft. Great, great quality fabric, and it's 5 99 per half metre. The maximum you're going to need is two and a half metres. The other side, there's the stripes if you want to do it on the reverse, or just have the contrasting cuffs. Uh, the dark grey. Is dark grey and yellow stripes. 5.99 for half a metre. Maximum you're going to need two and a half metres for the largest size. And the inside stripes. I'd have one with this side and then make another one. Uh, Julia is saying that she does a beginner's, she does a workshop making this and it's only a three hour workshop. So, I mean, this is something that's very, very fast make. The navy blue and pink, my favourite. Over half the stock of this is gone. This is going to be great for all of your evening barbecues, anything in the, over the summer, and you just want to throw on a nice, comfortable jumper. £5.99 for half a metre. And there it is on the mannequin. You see how we've got the contrasted striped cuffs, but that's up to you whether you do it the uh, other way around completely. There's your stripes. OK. Now, before we start having a look at the board wall and the coat again, uh, Jules is going to show us this brand new machine, brand new machine yeah. to us here. Yeah. So it's great when we bring so many new, uh, new buyers and new things, isn't it? 
These are lovely, actually. They are a special treat. Yes, it is um, a luxury item. They are a luxury item. But if you are working with a lot of jersey, then they're invaluable. Okay. So you can just have your overlocker there to sew it all kind of the construction part of everything. And then the um, cover stitch machine will just needle all the hems off for you. So this is perfect for all dressmaking. Yeah. And again, we're talking about the professional finish with the overlocker. This will exactly. another one to give yes. you that really professional finish. Yes. Yeah. I've got one and I love it. Okay. Yes. The only thing that you want to remember is that you're going to be sewing from the right side. So when you've turned under your hem, and again, because this is tele sewing, I'm kind of winging it slightly. Okay. But what you would normally do is to turn that up and press your hem so mm -hmm. that it's nice and flat. Oops, there we go. Let's make sure that we've got that. There we go. So you'd press your hem up and then you can, if you want to, pin it in place, but you can pin it from the right side. Right, okay. So what you could do, for example, is just pin where the edge of your mm -hmm. hem is going to be. Because what the cover stitch does is it goes over the edge of the hem underneath. Right, okay. Now you can use, at the moment this one's set up for three needles, but you could just do two. So will it give you that same three needle? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah it's finished. Um, if you haven't got one of these, what you can use is a twin needle on your sewing machine. Mm -hmm. So this is what it does. But this is the professional version of it. Okay. Really. And these are great. So if you're making, I mean, they're perfect. If you're doing loads of leggings or kids' yeah, clothes or something yeah. like that, you can just whiz things yeah. up so quickly. They're brilliant. So what I'm going to do is now, if you once you've decided how big your hem width mm -hmm. is going to be, you can, if you want to, if it's easier, just put a little bit of tape on the bed of your machine there, and that gives yeah, you an good extra idea. marker. Good idea. But you can feel with your fingers again where, where the, the edge is. is. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna pop that just underneath there and make sure that the edge of my hem is going straight through where the, mm -hmm. I've got the three little prongs here, three little marks I on the see, front. Yeah. Now they tell you where the needle positions are. So you know where your hem is in relation to where the stitches are going to be, which is really handy, makes yes. it much easier. So again, what we're going to do is just take that. There we go. And again, I can feel with my fingers where it all is. There we go. I won't go the whole way. Mm -hmm. So obviously you would, now you can just see what Yeah, that looks lovely, that yeah. Is. And then what's the reverse then? Ah, fantastic. So yeah. it does, again, make it so ever so hard wearing that yes. once you're washing and washing, it's going to protect your garments yeah. For, yeah. for a little longer. So it's a really secure hem. Sometimes if you've got, um, if you're just using a twin needle on the mm -hmm. machine, because you've only got that one bobbin thread and the two needles, it doesn't, you know, if, you've, if any of those threads are compromised, then that's when it will start to come undone and you end up with a dropped hem. But this is brilliant. This will keep everything really nice and secure. There we go. So anybody that loves dressmaking, this is that really luxury item that's mm. going to give you that extra professional finish. Definitely now. put one on your wish list. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now, we are going to have a look at how to make the coat again. Oh, this one hasn't got wheels. I'll just leave it there. Uh, we'll go and have a look at the, the wool and then Lovely. I'll be back with you. So we've got five different options on boiled wool. You've seen the green on the mannequin there. We've got it in. Oh, by the way, if you have already put the Easy Cover Elna into your basket, half of the stock has gone, it was limited. And it, uh, whenever we bring anything that is brand new, it's always very, very popular. If you've got any questions, get them in whilst Julia is here because she has one, she says she uses one. So any questions that you've got then definitely get involved as it is a brilliant, brilliant offer for today. You're saving 31 pounds and 49 pence on the Easy Cover Bundle. And you get the four threads as well included. Oh, let me grab the pattern. Thank you. The Bianca pattern is here. Again, same as the last one. Very comprehensive instructions. A lot of time and a lot of care has been taken when writing the instructions and, and making the patterns for you. And you do get this gorgeous Cotigan uh, pattern for £16. Same as before, you have all of your measurements, requirements, everything you're going to need to complete the coat. Now the largest size, it's eight, size 8 to 22, the largest size 
uh, all, the most you're going to need, the most fabric you're going to need will be two and a half meters. We are going to uh, demo with the Accru, which is this one. I'll show you that one first. And that will look really, really nice with the contrasting thread, as Julia was saying. And it's perfect for this time of year. We have got the more sort of wintry colours. But if you do just want something for those summer evenings, a cross between a cardigan and a coat is 11 99 for half a metre, ever so soft again. So this is the one that we are going to demo with. And we're running out of time, aren't we? So we'll come straight across to you and, uh, and see how we do this. Because this is slightly more advanced, isn't it? It's the beginner's plus. Well, there's one tricky bit. Right, OK, one we need tricky to show bit. that then. But what I want to do is just to show you quickly how to go around corners. OK, yes. Because we didn't do that with the other one. Now, what do, when was it that we did this before? So we can... Oh, gosh. Uh, it was in April, April wasn't it? I think, I'll find yeah. out the date for you and then we can, we can yeah. actually... Yeah, 20th of April, there you go. Ah, oh, there we 20th are. 20th of April, so you can actually watch back on YouTube because obviously we're not going to have time to show every part no. of it. So together we'll be able to... So I'm going to go to quickly show. around the edge of the pocket. Yeah. Now the pockets have a little notch in one edge. So this is on the pattern, This is it? on the pattern, absolutely. So that little notch there matches up with one of the notches on the side seams. Yeah, you just... So we don't need to overlock that bit. OK. Because that's going to get caught into the side seam, and if we overlock it, it's just extra bulk. So all we need to do is just go around the three other sides. Now with an overlocker, because the threads don't really unravel. The nice thing is, once you get to the end, you can, you can let it going. run, snip it off, mm -hmm. and then just restart it again. It's so fast, isn't it? it is I can't so believe how quick it is. They are absolutely brilliant. So all you would then do, now you can, you can trim it back in, uh, you can weave it back in, but I just, I just snip it off. Yeah. And that just gives you, I love the contrasting mm. thread, actually. Yeah, yeah, it the works really The cream with the black well. works yeah. really nicely. Yeah. Which is fantastic. So that's how you would do the pockets mm -hmm. and also how you would do all the way around the edge. Yeah. So that's quite a nice way to yeah. do it. That, see, that does add a, a really nice feature to it, actually, yeah. doesn't it, on the cuffs yeah. in the pocket? We've got about lovely. 15 minutes to okay. show as much as we can. Lovely. What I want to do then is to show you again how to do the back neck because that's the trickiest part. Now we've got the two front pieces here. So again, you were talking about navigation earlier mm -hmm. on. It's mm -hmm. trying to work out which bit's which. Yeah. So the best thing I find to do is to kind of lay them all out in front You'd of you. You'd always cut everything first. Cut everything first. Uh, and then mark up all your notches and any of the pattern markings that okay. are on here. So what I've done is I've put the notches on there for the sleeve, so that will match up for the armhole. And then what we want to do is to do the back neck. So mm -hmm. on here, this is your front edge that creates the waterfall. This is your shoulder seam that goes into the armhole mm -hmm. and then down the side seams. And this is the back neck that creates the collar. So what we're gonna do is stitch that bit together first. Now on here, it doesn't matter which way round it is. Normally, you'll, you'll be able to know which is the right and the wrong side because um, you'll have your pockets stitched yeah, on. Yeah. So no, what you would do is stitch your pockets on first. And then what we want to do is to do the wrong sides of the fronts together first because when that folds over, you don't see the seam down the back. Right, OK. So that, again, is really simple to do. Uh, we're going to lift up the foot so we can get the fabrics tucked in nice and neatly under there. There we are. So that's open. That's joined the two front pieces together so that we can open those out. There, there we, we go. go. Yes. So what we can do is add those onto the back. So again, the best way to do it is to lay it all out in fl flat in front of you so you can see which bit's which. So we've got the back front neck and the back mm -hmm. of, the, uh, of the coat. Now, what I want to do is because we, this is the right side, although it's got the seam on it, so we're going to lift that up and join those together. Now, this is one rare instance where you can pin. OK, then. But what we're going to do is keep the pins well away from... from the machine, yeah. yeah. And what we also want to do is just to do a tiny snip into this corner here so that we can bend 
that round to create the shoulder seam. So I'm going to do the same on here. Now you've got markings on the pattern so that it will tell you exactly where you need to make all your cuts and everything like that. So what we're going to do then is to bend that round. So those two shoulder edges match. And we can make those line up. Again, I'm going to pin quite a distance away from... And then that, where we've made the base of that little snip will come up. There's a, there'll be a dot on your pattern. And we're going to make those kind of sit together like that. So when you're overlocking, you're actually overlocking that little corner off. So I'm going to pop a, a pin in there just to hold that in place. And then we'll do the same on the other side. We've had a quick question, um, oh, yeah. Mary Ann. Oh, asking about the uh, easy cover machine. Is it easy to thread? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Again, it's a bit like an overlocker. People get really scared about how to thread them up and everything. Everything is all colour coded inside, so it makes it really, really easy to follow all the little nooks and crannies and the right. hooks and bits and pieces. It's worth on a wet Wednesday afternoon or something yeah. like that, just sitting yeah. down and with uh, and having a play with them. Absolutely. Yeah. But they're not scary. Just stroke them and talk to them nicely <laughs> yeah. and then you'll be fine. There we go. So that's in place. So you've got your basic... Do you talk to your machines as well? I do. <laughs> yes. Me too. Sometimes I swear at them when yeah. they're not working, but yeah. <laughs> there we go. So what we're going to do is overlock from one shoulder around across and cut off that little corner bit mm -hmm. over the back neck, cut off the other corner a little bit, and then back to the other end right. of the shoulder. Take the pins out as you go, yeah. Well, if you've pinned just avoid them, them, if you've pinned them far enough away, because basically, again, what you're going to do is use your fingers as pins. All we're doing is using the, the actual pins to get it from the table to the machine. So what we're doing again is just letting the machine do all the work. Now, everything should be nice and flat underneath, mm -hmm. so you can double check that. And what we're going to do is try and get the edges together. There's my tweezers. Tweezers, always have your tweezers to yeah. hand. How They're is so it working useful. with the uh, boiled oh, wool? Lovely. Yeah, It's yeah. so nice. It just kind of behaves itself. It doesn't slip again, similar no. to the other one. It's... Yeah, exactly. So similar to how we were going around the corners for the, um, the Julia, yeah. what we want to do is to aim your left needle and you've got the little mark on the front of the foot there that tells you where the left needle is and that needs to come so it's just coming across the base of your snip so it mm -hmm. catches the fabric in where you've just snipped it. And again, we're also going to pivot with your left hand to get it to go round that curved shape. So again, you can just see the left needle's just catching mm -hmm. the fabric in there. So we've gone round that curve, and then we can move it so that we've got all of the fabric underneath nice and flat. We're going to go straight over that back, centre back seam. Now again, you can see actually where I've, it's just gone stretched it just a little bit, so we've got mm -hmm. that little bit that's hanging over. You can trim that off as you go over your back next seam. There we are, so... This is the good thing, is that you can just keep stopping, readjust yeah. your fabrics, Absolutely. And just keep going. Yeah, so we're coming up again. We're making sure it's nice and flat underneath. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get all of this extra fabric here bunched up and just squidged into place like that. Again, I'm using my right. fingers to hold it all in place. I'm looking where that left needle's going to go mm -hmm. and pivoting around the corner. So again, just catching the fabric in at the base of the snip that we made. There we go. Let's take out those pins because they've done their job. There we go. So what we've done now, so where those corners kind of bent that mm -hmm. way, they've now kind of folded inwards to create the back neck seam. Oh, there we go. So you can ah, see. Ah, nice, yeah. Yeah. So those are now your shoulder seams here. So you've got your back neck mm -hmm. and these are your shoulder seams. So that will fold forwards. There. 
and then you've got your collar there. Yeah, this is what I'd have to keep doing, is just then... Just readjusting re it. Readjusting it, so putting your... it back somewhere, so then I can visually sort of yes. see... There it goes. That's yeah. it. So you can see how it's starting to come together. So your pockets would already be pockets on. Pockets would already be there. So what was the really tricky bit that you were saying? That was it. That bit. That was it. So it wasn't oh, that brilliant. bad, really, was Yeah, it? no, that's all right. That's not too bad. Yeah. That's okay. Have we got time to see anything? Else? Again, I can show you how to do the sleeve. Yeah. Because that's the next bit. Okay. So again, right sides together. This will go in in the same way as the Julia top. So I'm going to trim that little bit off there. Now, with your sleeve, you've got uh, notches that will tell you um, which way the sleeve goes in because mm -hmm. you have a back and a front sleeve. Yeah, you have. I, I would never have known that, but I've heard that that it would it would be in backwards, wouldn't it? Otherwise, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You don't think about it. You think they that are both different sleeves shapes. are the same. Yeah. yeah but and no. the reason we have that is because yeah. we have more movement towards the front. Uh -huh. We don't have our arms going out yeah. the back, so you don't need as much of a curve at the back as you do at the front. Right, OK. So there is method to the madness. <gasps> so on here, we've got a single notch for the front and a double notch for the back. Now, that's universal across everything. So that's all, all patterns will have the same kind of thing. So we can make sure that we've got the single notch yeah. there on the sleeve that will match the single notch on the front. And then the double notch on the sleeve will match uh -huh. the double notch on the back. And then we've also got a notch in the middle that matches up yeah, with your Brilliant. centre. So it Simple. kind of does work. Yeah. And then what we're going to do, I'm not going to bother to pin this. I'm going to show you how easy it is. Again, this is nice fabric to work with. So if you are starting out using good fabric, mm -hmm. it does make a big difference, yeah, actually. Yeah. A lot of people want to kind of use cheap stuff to try things practice, out. But actually, that's a it's, lot harder. It's, yeah. Sometimes it's a false economy. Yeah. There we go. So I've just got it started, and that's going to give me a chance to kind of arrange everything. And I'm going to make sure that I've got my notches matched mm -hmm. there. So the two single notches match. I'm going to use my fingers to hold those together. And then we've got the next bit to match up will be the notch on the center with the shoulder. And I can pull oops, that edge back so that it's all lined up, ready to go. A lot of people get fearful with overlockers because they think, oh my gosh, it cuts. Exactly, yeah. But yeah. I think if you are just careful and you think about where you're positioning everything, then it's fine. There we go. Yeah, I'd get scared thinking this is ever so final. This is the final things, but um, yeah, as long as you, yeah. you plan where everything, and with the patterns as well, it is very simple. It tells you step by step. Yes, yeah. We do make everything as easy to follow as we possibly can. There we go. So we're matching up the double notches now. So they'll match up together. And again, I'm just making sure that everything's nice and flat. You can feel mm -hmm. with your fingers as well that everything's nice and mm -hmm. flat and you haven't got anything caught up underneath. In actual fact, both the, uh, the Julia top and the Bianca coat are very, very similar in construction. So if you've done one, you'll definitely be able to do the other. Oh, brilliant. There we go. Just let that run. And then that's your sleeve head. How Perfect. Can, how We've got about easy four minutes with you still, so we can... Oh, um... no, that's fine. There we go. So the other thing to do now, then, would be to do your side seams. Yeah. And so that will literally just fall as it is, that waterfall yes. sort of colour. There's nothing, because I would think that's a really sort of fancy... No, it, oh, it's so lovely, actually, because it just sits. Yeah. It just wants to kind of find its own way. And when you're wearing them, they are so comfortable. I was away for a weekend camping. Fantastic. So this was perfect, sitting by the campfire. It is just like a blanket, and it's just isn't an, it? Yeah, an extra layer to wear over the top. So that just falls. And then you've got your sleeve there. So again, all you would do is just zip up the side seam exactly like we did on the Julia. Perfect. Yeah. And I suppose then you could add a button or any embellishments. You can actually. What does look you? quite nice is, I know you've got the waterfall, but um, sometimes you can actually get it so that it kind of crosses over and yeah. wraps over, which is quite yeah. nice. 
Yeah, Especially when it's lovely. slightly more wintry. Yeah. With a or even or just put, like or that. even just put um, a pin. Yeah. yeah, with a scarf or something. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, brooch. That'd yeah, look lovely. Brilliant. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I think that's done. You're back in an hour anyway, aren't I am, you? Yes, with a new pattern. A brand new pattern. We always like brand new patterns. So thank you ever so much. Thank Thanks you so much. Right, we will see Julia again in an hour. Let's have another look through the different options, though, because yes, we love the accru colour, perfect for the summer evenings. But we have the more sort of wintry colours as well. Just to warn you, you do need to start checking out on everything. I hate to sound like a broken record, but I don't want you to miss out, especially on our brand new machine. A lot of questions, a lot of people asking about it. And it really is that luxury item that's going to take your finish to the, the final uh, professional finish, really. 519 pounds with a saving from 31, with a saving of 31.49. It comes straight from Elna straight from Elna, but you're only paying our postage and packaging, which is £2.95. So there you go. No matter whether you buy just pins today or needles or whether you buy our brand new sewing machine, you only pay one postage and packaging, which is £2.95. We also have the overlocker, which you've seen uh, Jaws use. And it is brilliant. Honestly, all of our dressmakers, anybody, all of our guests that come in, they'll always recommend this one. £269, which Honestly, it's such a fantastic investment. If you are loving dressmaking, go for it. Jules was saying that her workshops in her shop, the most popular is the overlocking uh, workshop. And once you've used it once, you will not look back. Saving today with free black thread as well. So make the most of that, take advantage. If it is in your basket, then please do check out as today's allocation is limited. It is extremely limited. And I think they all sold out last time in Julia's show. Patterns first. So the two patterns that we've shown this hour, we'll start with the t-shirt. I have to have a go at making this. And especially as it is literally just so easy, straight, just the corners were made easy. Uh, there's nothing too scary about this one. It is beginner's jersey, jumper, t-shirts, whatever you want to call it. It's lovely, 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 especially in the uh, jersey fabric that we used. So this is the Julia with the pockets, 16 pounds. And it is such a gorgeous gift for somebody. If you know somebody that's starting out or just got their overlock or after a gift for someone, this is, is beautifully presented. 16 pounds for your instructions and your patterns. There it is, there it is. Uh, the other pattern is the cotigan. So it's not, a, it's not a cardigan, it's a cotigan. I've never heard of a cotigan before. I love it, that mixture between the two. 16 pounds with your patterns, with your instructions. If you check out of your basket, there's only two left remaining. So it will sell out today. If you're watching in a repeat, definitely worth having a go, adding it to your order. It's 16 pounds uh, with 295 poster and packaging. Remember, all day long, only one PMP all day long. So if you do want to get some fun Brick to go with your patterns to have a go, then we have, let's do the, um, oh, we only have the dark grey left. I think we haven't got the other ones, but at the jersey, we have this one left. The others have now sold out. So we've got the dark grey with the yellow stripe. Now, if you're thinking, well, I've got the pink in my basket, I haven't yet checked out. Unfortunately, you've missed out. Please, please, please do remember to check out your basket. If you've got anything in there, if you've got this in, then check out. It's the last chance to get the jersey fabric. It's so lovely inside. It's really, really lovely. A boiled wool. We've got two grey options. We've got obviously the accrue, which you saw uh, Julia using. We'll get that back as well. We'll start with the light grey. 11.99. For half a metre. Now, the most you're going to need for the Cotigan is two and a half metres. That's for the largest size of size 22. Half a metre is £11.99. Very easy, very simple to work with as well, as Julia was saying. We've got the Accru, which I think look lovely with that contrasting thread and is perfect for this time of year. If you're after that nice summer blanket cardigan for all of your barbecues or just sitting out on the summer evening. <laughs> 
Paul's the fashionista and he's saying he'd get two of the different fabrics and put a contrasting colour. There you go. He is a trendsetter. He's a trendsetter, our Paul. There we go. Don't be, don't be put off by um, that idea, Paul. He's, he is fashionable, honestly. Don't believe what you've seen on the uh, Facebook fan page, those pictures of him. He is quite fashionable sometimes. So, this is the wine. Why not? 11.99 for half metre. Oh no, it's not even nine o'clock in the morning and I've used up all my funny now. I've been said something funny. <gasps> Taupe. <laughs> so, no, you haven't used up your funny. You haven't been funny yet. <laughs> At what point did you use your funny? Up <laughs> me to 11.99 and Olive. Have you seen the, in fact, is it the same colour? It's slightly different, isn't it? It's slightly different. It's a slightly different shade. This is olive. 11.99. Half metre. Loads of you just put this into your basket. Please do check out. Send in your pictures. Send in your pictures when you've done it as well. Don't forget to check out on the brand new machine. Brand new machine in today. Brand new to the sewing quarter. It's, I know that um, Adele was saying to me in the office that this is really, really difficult to get hold of. It's not something that you see everywhere. And it's just £519 a day with that £31.49 pence safety. Lucy Brennan is here. So do not go anywhere. We've got more fantastic makes coming up on the other side of this. Join us on Facebook. Simply search for The Sewing Quarter and like our page for the latest news and more. Join us on Sunday the 27th of May for two hours of quilting with expert Jane Alcock. At 9am, Jane demonstrates turned edge applique to create a grandmother's tulip block quilt. We have kits in four colourways incorporating pre-cuts from Tilda's new Sunkist collection, including vintage pink, misty mauve, sky blue and cool teal. Then at 11am, discover the dynamic design possibilities of the Bargello quilt. We know how much you love this pattern, so have created a choice of multicoloured kits to suit everyone. Tune in for two techniques, two styles and two hours of creative quilting with Jane. Sunday the 27th of May at 9am and 11am only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 687. Hello, my name's Jess Emmertal and these are my three top tips. My first top tip is number one, iron as you go, always press because you will never regret it, but you always will if you don't. Top tip number two, use small stitches. The smaller the stitches, the stronger the join in your fabric. Tip number three, it's only fabric. If you make a mistake, it doesn't matter. Start again or change your direction. Tune in on Tuesday the 29th of May when we're going unicorn crazy with Joe Carter. Listen for the clip clop of hooves at 8 a.m. when Jo shares her expert tips for making Elizabeth Hartman's Lisa the Unicorn quilt. Inspired by the strip pieced mane, we've created three kits including pretty pinks and purples, bold blues and greens, and a rainbow of striking fabrics. Jo is back at 10 a.m. with her very own unicorn softy, complete with legendary horn and shaggy felt mane. For a magical metallic twist, our kits include options in regal blue and gold and ice cool lilac and silver. If the call of the wild is more your thing, we've also got a kit containing black and white fabric, perfect for creating a unique zebra version. So join us for a morning of horsing around with Joe, Tuesday the 29th of May at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 687.
Welcome back. We've got a double whammy of guests today. Lucy Brennan is here uh, with some more lovely, lovely makes. In fact, we've got a brand new creative grid ruler coming up later on at 11 o'clock. So definitely stay tuned for that because I know so many people have been asking for the pineapple creative grid ruler, the large one. I know we've had the mini one before, but the, uh, the big one, the big boy is here. So let's have a look at this make. So we are going to be doing this, but in, the great thing about in these instructions is that you get lots of lots of makes as well. But Lucy is going to show us how to make this lovely. Let me open it. Needle case. Very very useful. Very very handy and a lovely gift for somebody. That's really pretty, isn't it? With da -da 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 -da, Liberty fabrics. It's going to look beautiful as well. By the way, if you've got the uh, brand new machine in your basket, there's a lot of you with it in your basket. So please be wary and make sure you check out as soon as you can. So let's go for the red first, which is the one that uh, Lucy's made. And it's so lovely, isn't it? So we're getting a Liberty Charm pack. There it is. So distinctive, isn't it, Liberty fabric? Before I even worked in this world of, um, of sewing, I knew Liberty Fabric when I saw it. It's so distinctive, so beautiful. So you get 16 in the charm pack. You also have half a meter of the linear effect red fabric. You have your thread. You have a sheet of felt. You get a lot in this bundle, don't you? You get your iron-on interfacing and you get instructions, which aren't just for the needle case. You also get uh, pin cushion instructions, sewing pouch instructions, your needle book instructions. That's the sewing pouch there. So, I mean, there's a lot, a lot of makes in there as well, which is brilliant. It's a big, big bundle, just $34.99. The next one is the more aqua option. So, again, you get your charm pack, slightly different sort of colours. This is more of a rainbow one. Let me put this one next to it so you can see it's slightly sort of different, different shades. This is the more sort of, very slightly, you can see it in, um, in the flesh, you can see the different. Oh, and you get the zip. Fantastic, missed the zip out. Uh, so there you, you get the charm pack, you get the linear, what colour is this called, Paul? Hmm? Lichen, lichen. We have some fancy colours. We do have some fancy colours. This is lichen. I lichen this one. And then you get um, wood sorrel felt. You have your thread, interfacing, zip, and your instructions. All oh, plus the wadding. Oh my word! You get so much. Okay. I keep missing everything out. The last option is the blues. In this one, you get blues. You have your cream linear. You have the felt, the thread, the zip, the wadding, the interfacing, and the instructions. Third time lucky, I got it all in. There we go. Um, just before I go over to Lucy, We can offer the Alice Caroline Charm Square pack individually. Problem is, is that it is extremely limited if you want it on its own. We've managed to allocate a small amount of stock for anybody that, you know, perhaps didn't want the whole bundle but just wanted to get the charm pack. So there's the rainbow one, 18.99. In fact, that's the only one that we can offer you. So if you do want that one, it's really, really limited. So it's there. Right, do you want me to bring... Oh, no, we've got a pattern over there. Hello, hello. hello. I've started already. <laughs> yeah, go for it. How are you? I'm very well, thank Jolly you. Jolly good. You've very brought well. this Manchester sunshine with you. I have. It's not even sunny in Manchester this morning. <laughs> It's horrible. Sorry we said we're going to need the boat, aren't we, to get out of here? We are definitely going to need raining. a boat. Yeah. Now, this is a really lovely, easy, small make. I know quite a lot of the ones that you come on with, big quilts, yes. take up a lot of room. This is a nice... Yeah. It is. It's lovely. And it's really nice to have those um, Alice, Alice Caroline packs yeah. to yeah. play with as well. So you can make all the projects that are in, in there with that Yeah, that's what's that great, isn't well. it? There's a few yeah. different projects. In fact, I love that um, pouch as well, this one. Yeah, it's really so you've got the cute. pouch, you've got the pin cushion, you've also got 
the needle book, which is what we're going yes. to be doing, isn't it? Yeah. So it's a bit of quilting going on, but yeah. also, like you said, a bit of playing with the, the fabric. Absolutely. And this is all uh, designed by Tori, who I know from online. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, they're just really fun little, little mates. It's a nice thing to do either to make as a gift or just for yourself, mm -hmm. for your sewing kit. So, yeah. Okay, so are we going to be able to show most of it? Yeah, I'm hoping so. Yeah, yeah I'm just made a, making a start on the patchwork. So to begin with, I've just cut out all of the pieces. Mm -hmm. And we're, it's, it is very little um, squares that we're starting with. Um, but you're just sewing them together um, into rows. It's just quite simple. Yeah. Um, Liberty can be a little fiddly to work with. It's lighter. The Tarna Lawn is lighter than, you know, a traditional uh, yeah. quilting cotton. Um, I like to use the best press to starch it just to give it a little a bit, bit more, more substance. Um, substance, exactly, so that um, it holds as, you, as you're working with it. Um, but I've just, I'd arranged the uh, patchwork pieces and I'm just sewing those together now. Mm -hmm. So just right sides together. And what I will mention with Liberty is... It's hard to see which it's is It's hard the front. to see which is the front and yeah. which is the back. So it's something that you just want to be mindful of and you can double check. Yeah. If you make a mistake, you know, that's actually the back, this yeah. one. But if I was to make a mistake and sew that one, it doesn't look, no, no. you know, but then if I turn it over, you then can you see can it is see. more vibrant. Yeah. But if I was to sew it together the wrong way, it doesn't yeah. really, you know, doesn't really matter. So I'm just chain piecing these. So I've got my quarter inch foot on and I'm just uh, sewing with a quarter inch seam. And I like to chain piece because it does just make it a little bit quicker. So we're doing four rows of three, mm -hmm. four rows of three squares. So I'll keep these together now. Whoops. And then I'll just add on my next Perfect, piece. Perfect, yeah. So it just makes that bit go a little bit faster. And I like this bundle is lovely with all of these uh, blues in it. Mm. It's really nice. Yeah, the other two are more sort of rainbow vibrant. They're really pretty, but yeah. this is really nice. Yeah, it's a bit more neutral, isn't it, if that's your thing? Oh, oh didn't have you just said no? I think it does that if I don't press hard enough. It's like, come on. Do it a bit more. So I just open these out as I go. You know, you can snip your threads off in between if you find that um, easier. I just do this for speed, really. We have uh, the message. Is the easy cover machine easy thread? We've done that, haven't we? Yeah, same one. Hi, Vicky and Lucy. Hi. <laughs> this was my first patchwork and quilting make. Lovely oh, one. nice. Oh, great. She said all three items as well are daily use. Well which done. Which is true, yeah. Hello, Lynn. Thank you for your message. Lynn in Somerset. That's a great thing, is that these are things that you're going to be able to take to your workshops and take around with you. And yeah, useful. Our daily use. Yeah. Useful things. And that's what's really nice, you know, to have... It's fun just making just because. Yeah. But it's nice when you get to well, at use the, moment, the things you've made. My, my um, thing over the last couple of weeks has been... I've learned how to do aprons, so that's all I'm doing at the moment. And they're not very <laughs> many useful. Many exactly. Well, I don't do any cooking or cleaning, so I don't actually. Some people need collect to. aprons, you know. Yeah, you I feel like I'm doing a huge production line of yeah, aprons. Yeah. So I've I keep my sections. Um, okay. So. You know, with I don't cut off the strings right. as I'm sewing them together, and I've just taken that first row and the second row and I've pinned them together and I pin on the diagonal because mm -hmm. that just helps keep everything um, in its place and then I'll just sew my rows together with a Do quarter inch again. you need to press them? I mean you should be. Okay. In between you should press your rows yeah, and then yeah. do it but I just finger press it yeah. and then pin it yeah. and that's enough especially when you're working with these it's little such a pieces. Lightweight, yeah. Little yeah. It, they do finger press nicely. And then I'll sew it all together and then give it a press before and I come to sew the next piece. And is there a rule of which way you're pressing your um, Well, I'm just pressing them to the side. Yeah. So uh, the top row was going that way. It doesn't matter no. which way you do it. And the next row goes that way. But then when I open this out and I come to sew the second one to the third, mm -hmm. I want to keep that direction there. So I keep this one, because it's already sewed this way. 
if I was to press it back, I'm going to have a twist in my seam yeah, and that's just yeah, creating yeah. unnecessary bulk. bulk. So I press, I keep that one the same way and press the other one to the other side and then just butt them up against each other. So they nest nicely and then pin. And I'm so used to doing it, I can feel it very easily with my fingers and what I get people to do um, if I'm teaching beginners, I say if you pull it apart slightly and feel it with your fingers, mm -hmm. you'll feel the gap. Yeah. And if you put the seams on top of each other and feel it, you feel the bulk. Yeah. And then if you nest them perfectly, you you know push yeah. them up against each other, you'll feel that. And you just get into the habit of doing it and becomes second nature almost. So because I didn't press this, I just want to be careful that I don't catch the seam on the underside. So I'm just going to fold, make sure yeah, that that's, that's folded, folded back under. as I'm going. And again, when I come to that one, make sure that that one's folded underneath and that my ends are matching. And then one last one. So just repeat the same thing. Make sure that seam's going in the same direction. Oh, and I'm not catching that bit underneath. <laughs> I'll just pop a pin in there. I do like how you've actually like chained them all together because it can get quite fiddly with the smaller pieces yeah, as well. Yeah, but even when I'm doing large, if I'm doing larger blocks, You'd if I've laid change. them out, it just helps me keep the order that yeah. I want to sew them in. So. Um, sometimes I label and things, but just if I've laid it out, then I can just sew yeah. them together. It's, it just makes things a bit quicker, really. So there's no right or wrong. Everybody finds their own method and their own way of keeping track of where they want things to be positioned. OK, so that's the patchwork mm -hmm. section done. Fantastic. So I'm just going to give that a press. So now with this, because I've got all those seams already going in that direction, mm -hmm. but where I've got the slightly bulkier bits, I will press this open. open. So I do just need to clip my threads now in between because I've just got little loops. Can you see there? Yeah. So I've just got little loops from where I chain piece. So I just clip those so that I can keep this, press the seam open easily. Trying not to cut the fabric. Okay. Now I couldn't even see them then. I was thinking, gosh, that's, yeah. I think I'm just so used to it, yeah. And so then just opening up that seam to keep everything nice and flat. I mean, it is a, you know, it is a reasonably delicate fabric. So if you wanted to press to the side, it's yeah. no, you know, it's not going to create too, too much bulk, but it's just nice to have that, because um, this is making up the front of the needle case. It's just nice to have everything have be flat. nice and flat. Yeah. I've just um, got my mini iron, so this would be a perfect yes. one for my mini iron. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, it does get hot. <laughs> Forget. If I've got my mini iron out, then it means that other people around will say, oh, will you just iron this? I'm saying I'm not ironing. <laughs> Pressing, I've got my mini yeah. iron, yeah. <laughs> Can't iron a shirt with that. You'd be there for days, wouldn't you? <laughs> There we go. So I can just clip off those uh, threads from where I started. So that's the patchwork piece that makes up the front section. That's what I love about Liberty Fabric. They all just work together so well. They don't do. They? And it's nice, I think, as well, because even with these, these small pieces, because of the prints, you're getting um, variation in the scale. So you've got some of them are the very small, mm -hmm. you know, what we'd call ditzy prints. Mm -hmm. And then you've got some some of the classic prints and larger scale ones. So yeah. it's just a really nice yeah. um, combination. And if you wanted to, you could fussy cut. Uh, Tori's done a lovely job of fussy cutting mm -hmm. the prints that she's yeah, used in yeah. there. So if I wanted to have a particular floral be in the center, I mean, I've accidentally fussy cut yeah, that one yeah. almost, you know, to have the, the yeah. floral in the center there. And then I suppose, could you make it larger? Could you keep going and make a, a bigger one or? Yeah, I mean, it's quite easy with patterns like this yeah. to, um, you know, adapt them and, yeah. and make them how you want to. So you absolutely, you could just repeat it yeah. to make a larger sort of portfolio. And mm. if you're happy doing zips and things, you could even add a zip into yeah. it or make it a bit more like a travel yeah. case yeah. sort of a thing if you wanted. So, yeah, easily you could do that. So um, I'm just going to 
follow the instructions. <laughs> so um, once you've done that bit, you're going to add um, the spine and the back. So I've already um, you've cut all these, cut these out. out. Yeah. So. And actually, you have plenty left over with the charm pack, don't you? You do. In fact, just making this one, I didn't even use all of the fabrics that were in the pack. No. So um, I've still got pieces of Liberty that I haven't cut into at all. Fantastic. So that's quite nice. But then, obviously, if you're going to make all of them, yeah. you, I think you'd still have some left over because yeah. you're only using such tiny little yeah. squares yeah. from it. So you'd be able to use it in another project if you wanted to. So this becomes the back piece. And this becomes like the spine mm -hmm. of the needle case. So you can see on that one, I used one of the um, florals for the, for the spine. And then I just kept just one print for the back, which is how it is in the, um, yeah. in the pattern. Lovely. So I'm just going to sew the um, spine on. So again, just right sides together. And when I'm sewing this, I'm going to sew it from the back piece of the patchwork piece get my so words that out. you can check so that i can seams, make yeah. sure i'm not catching yeah. any of those seams yeah and then i'm going to press this and we're pressing um sort of towards the spine Again, so that the bulk of those seams there is, you know, not going back on itself. Let me just give it a press from the front as well. It already starts to look like a little bulk, yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, as yeah. soon as you add the spine, yeah. it sort of changes it. And then just going to add the back piece as well. So just the same thing. And again, I'm going to sew it this way. Just because I've got the the bulk mm -hmm. there, so I can just sort of keep an eye on yeah, that. Yeah, that you're not pressing it. Yeah. So, I mean, look at the instructions. They, again, give you step-by-step step with the pictures as well, which I love. So it just tells you step-by-step step exactly how to do it, breaking it down. Everything you're going to need is there. And, of course, in the bundle, you do get everything that you're going to need, along with the wadding, with the interfacing, uh, with the thread, with the zip. So that's the bundle. You have got um, all of the bits and bobs that you're going to need to make everything. So that's the sewing pouch and the pincushion as well. OK, well. I am at this point just going to starch it a little okay. bit because um, I'm going to layer it up um, for basting to do the quilting. So I just like to add a bit of the a bit of the starch before I do the quilt. And this, does this sort of just stiffen it? So make yeah, it more... just slightly here. Do you want to feel it? Oh, yeah. So it's yeah. not like crispy but or especially anything. Because it's not it's such thin fabric because yeah. it's like thinner than... It just gives it that little yeah. bit of weight just so that it's going to stay nice and flat. You know, I've given it a press and then... Um, I could, so now I can just baste it. You can get ones, I'm sure we've got ones, haven't we, that uh, have got scent to them as well, haven't we? Yes, this one's scent that one's free. the scent free. We'll yeah. add them on, we'll, set, we'll add this one on, this is the scent free one. So um, I'm just going to check that I've not missed anything, <laughs> I don't think I have. Uh, no, I'm right. So I've got my backing piece of fabric and all the measurements um, are in there. The only thing I did slightly differently was I made the backing the same size as the wadding. Mm -hmm. In the cutting instructions, it's just a little bit smaller, but I'd rather know when I attach the front that I'm definitely larger. catching yeah. um, the back. So I just cut my um, backing piece just the same size as the wadding. Well, so again, I can you be get sure. plenty, don't you? You get half a metre in you the You do, bundle, and so. I'm only, I'm, I'm wasting a tight, but it's fractional you know yeah. so um now in the um in Tori's version and in the version that I made I did like a cross hatch on the mm -hmm. um just on the squared section I didn't do any quilting on the back section I think because it's liberty I would quilt that section um, just to, again, to give it that little bit more Okay, does Tori um, just say to do the front, just the front? Well, she just says quilt, quilt it however it, yeah. you want. Yeah. yeah, so you can do, you can do it um, whatever you like. 
However, if you're going to quilt, because I didn't quilt the spine and I wouldn't because you're no. going to be bending that and you do a stitch when you come to add the felt. So I just quilted the patchwork section and I'm going to do the same, but then I'm also going to quilt this section. But what you want to be mindful of is you're going to see some of the stitching on the reverse. Yeah. So if you once we've got the felt in there, if that stays open, you can't see it. But as soon as you fold back a piece of the felt, you will see the stitches on the reverse. Okay. So if I'm only quilting this square bit, I'm making my point, sorry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know yeah. I'm rambling. But if I'm only going to quilt this section, I have to stop and start at the spine. Yeah. So I just did a locking stitch, which makes a little bit of a mess on the back. Um, but I'm not too worried because it's just a little make. If you if that bothers you, you want to leave longer tails and then you um, stitch tie them, yeah. stitch them yeah. in. Yeah, so do a knot and, and pull it through. Um, but that's just something to think about when okay. you come to quilt it, that okay. you are going to see some of it on the mm -hmm. reverse, like you would with a quilt. Yeah. So um, you can treat it the same way or just go slightly differently. So... Although I did cross hatch last time, for this one I'm just going to do like a grid. So I'm going to do a quarter inch um, alongside the seam and then I'm going to go this way and then I'll show you what I mean about how I'm going to start. So I just need to change over my foot because I want to put my This is lovely to see this part on. because I know often when we're doing the larger quilt, yeah. it, we just get time to show the blocks, how to do the blocks. So it's nice actually. We do and I'm going to show binding as well, yeah. which I never get to no, show. No. So that's quite nice. So just putting the walking foot on. And this is just a small project. So if you don't have a walking foot, I wouldn't worry too much about it. But I, it, it is it recommended have, yeah. for quilting because yeah. you're going through those layers. And when you put the binding on, yeah. you have got a bit more fabric ag again. Yeah. So it just makes things a little bit easier. Um, and it means it's, it's a dual feed foot is the other name for it. And it means that it's got the um, feed dogs, like the little grips on yeah. the top as right. well as on the bottom, so that your whole project's going through evenly okay. rather than the bottom going quicker than the, the top, yeah. which is somehow, uh, sometimes when people are quilting, that's what gives you like puckers. Yeah, and even though this is um, that smaller project and quite thin, it's not a big thick one, do you still use a quilting needle or? What sort of needle do you use? Um, Does it matter? I would still use a quilting yeah. needle, but maybe not such a big one. You'd probably be okay using um, like a, an 11 or a 12 okay. would, be, would be fine. So um, I'm just going to quilt. I'm just going to sort of eyeball yeah, it yeah. just fractionally away from that seam. And I would reduce your stitch length um, with, when you're quilting this because it's only a small project. If you have big stitches, it sort of looks a bit... Yeah. Um, sort of clumsy so as I'm doing these uh, downward stitches it doesn't actually matter because I can go off the edge mm -hmm. so I don't need to worry about um, you know stopping and, and starting and you're just using a, a white thread but you could use yeah I suppose any that any that you want yeah, yeah. I mean, a white's quite nice, I think, because, the, you know, the Liberty is very traditional, but I think yeah. it just gives it sort of a bit of fresh... Yeah, yeah. Just ..keeps it nice and fresh. And there's a lot of white in these prints anyway. OK, so I've just done three... Should I show what I've done? Yeah. I've just done three lines of stitching going down. Yeah, I so I could, if I wanted, you know, go opposite, you know, do a complete grid and go either side of that seam as well. But just for time's time. sake, I'm just going to do it that way. So now I need to come this way. So I can either do it going this way and end here, but I would rather begin at the spine and work down. Okay. Because I, can, I know I'm going to start exactly where I want to, so rather nice. than getting to the end and worrying about where I am. So when I begin, I'm going to drop my needle right into that seam mm -hmm. and I'm going to do a locking stitch in okay. there. And then I can show you what I mean about the back of it being now, could you a little bit messy. Now, could you choose whatever stitch you kind of wanted to do? Well, to it's just it. to start off with. So when you're quilting, and it would be the same on a quilt, you either leave tails of thread, knot it and pop the knot in through mm -hmm. the quilt. Or you can do a series of little stitches yeah. to hold yeah. your stitching in place. 
Um, I wouldn't do um, a locking stitch. It's where it just does a few stitches in one place. Yeah. I wouldn't do that on a quilt and you'll see why in a second. But just because this is a small make and I'm not too worried about the reverse of it, I'm gonna do the locking stitch. And this is what I did. I did the same thing on the sample I made as well. So just when I lower the needle, I'm just making sure I'm going right in that seam allowance. And then this one has a button for, for the locking stitch. So it just goes, it just stays in one place and goes up and down. And then I can start stitching. And then the same thing again. Oh, I didn't do the locking stitch. I'll just do it there. <laughs> okay. So then you just trim the threads. It might be tricky to see. Oh, no, you can it's see. It's ever so neat still, No, but it? see that mess there? <laughs> oh, you See where it's like got, a, it's like a little finicky. bird's nest of threads. Couldn't you just trim this a bit? Well, though? you can trim it a bit. You just want to be careful. It does form it like a little knot. Mm -hmm. So when you're trimming it, you don't want to trim the knot that it's yeah, created. Yeah. So I can try and sort of pull bits of these um, out and just trim them off so it's not quite so messy but you wouldn't want this on a quilt. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, and if you're stopping yeah. and starting a lot, you don't want a quilt that's got a load of no, bumpy no. bits no, on, the, it doesn't matter as much on the back. And it's not as secure as burying your, burying your threads either. So I would always say when you're um, quilting to bury your threads, but for something like this, you know, don't need to worry. No. I don't think you need to worry too much. No, and it's, no, and it is, you can't see the, in the It fabric. will be covered by the felt yeah, yeah. for the most part. And with anyway, the linear, so. it's, it's fine. Yeah, you can hardly see it. So I'm going to quickly just quilt this and I'm just going to go diagonal. I'm just going to do one big cross. Then there's okay. no stopping and starting. I can just um, go ahead. And then once I've done that, because I don't want this moving, even though I'm going to bind it before I trim it, I'm just going to um, do like a little top stitch all the way around the edge just to hold everything in, in okay. place. Okay, whilst you quickly do that, we'll okay. run back over and have a look at the bundles uh, because they are very, very popular. Lovely, simple project, isn't it? Quilting project. Uh, the one that Lucy is demoing with is this one. This has been the most popular. If you've got it in your basket, please do check out. A lot of you are, are, are there taking advantage of this one. $34.99 for the whole bundle. Now, not only do you get the instructions for the needle book, you also have the instructions for the pin cushion and the sewing pouch as well. And they are lovely, lovely instructions. So you get the charm pack. You have half a metre of linear. 30 by 30 felt, a full thread, a zip for your sewing pouch, wadding as well. Wadding's for the, um, for the pin cushion, isn't it? But you get, look at this, you get all of your wadding for the pin cushion. So that's gonna last you for lots of projects. Um, you get your interfacing as well. Now the rainbow one, we love this, very summery, very, very, um, girly isn't it it's beautiful we will get summer back we will get summer back it's been gorgeous hasn't it the last couple of weeks so there you go you've got the rainbow with the um iron-on interfacing with the felt oh drop the thread uh the thread as well um you will get it uh you'll also have the zip and your full instructions. This one, the last option, is the one that you've seen already made. Yeah, these are really bright, aren't they? This is actually called Bright Liberty. Very, very bright. It works well as well with the red felt and the red linear, half a meter of red linear, red thread, iron-on interfacing, zip, and wadding and of course your instructions as well 
So we're actually going to see how to do the binding. We are. So this one's a little bit different from a quilt in that it's a two inch binding strip. Right. So I'm just folding it in half and giving it a press. Now I don't, I actually forgot to do this in prep because if I'm being really honest when I'm making a quilt, I don't press my binding. I just sew it and sort of fold it as I'm um, quilting. But for something like this, just because it's a little bit um, smaller, it's yeah. just going to make life easier. So it's just um, straight of grain, two inches, and then um, press that in half. So that's the binding, which I'm going to attach. So what we've just done is just gone across, you say this. So I've just done a cross yeah. like that. Perfect. Just very simple, isn't showing up very well, but it's there. <laughs> yeah. um, so just to hold that in place. And then I'm just gonna trim, trim this um, back. Now you might find, you know, because of the quilting or just the cutting or the pressing or whatever, that you've gone a little bit skew with, yeah. um, which it has done just ever so slightly down here. So it's not, I'm all straight there and it's just slightly gone mm -hmm. off. Uh, there it could have been my seam allowance could have been because of the quilting there's lots of reasons but because that's so fractional I'm not going to worry about it I'm going to trim it straight and I'll cover that with my with the binding if it was a, a lot obviously you can't sort of disguise no. that so I just make it a little bit smaller yeah, yeah. it's you know doesn't really matter no. so long as you get there in the end so, um, I'll keep trimming mine down and I'll end up this size. <laughs> yeah. I've been one No, you in won't. It. You won't. <laughs> but if you have to trim, you know, an eighth of an inch off yeah. or something, that's totally fine. So, to square it off, I'm just lining up the edge of the ruler. And this is just a small, you know, piece. So, with a quilt, I'd be doing it like the other way. But I just trim that straight and that, and then uh, turn it round and do the other side. So. This gets rid of any of those ends where I went over with the mm. um, quilting as well. So, and it's far more important that this edge is straight than I try and line it up with the fabric, really. If you have to lose a tiny bit, it's better that it's perfectly straight because you're making a little needle book. If yeah. it's not, um, the edges aren't straight, you notice yeah, when yeah. you when you fold it back. So that's just like a little quilted, you can, maybe you can see the cross on that side. Yeah, there you can you go. see it. So that's our little quilted piece there. And you really, you could, you know, go to town with this, do oh, as much or as yeah. little quilting as you want. You could use some decorative stitches, yeah. however you want to um, embellish it. But even just if it's kept very simple, I think mm -hmm. it looks really pretty. So that's the front of the case nearly done so we're going to add um the binding we've got an email come through from who sorry ethne hello hello oh here it is hi vicky and lucy just love your demos lucy and your enthusiasm vicky keep going girls keep it going girls uh did you see the collection did you see the collection and use the salvage edge from the free spirit for a little tab on the pin cushion Really cannot throw anything away. Exactly, that's, that's great, so isn't it? cute. That's such a good idea. I really like that, and I keep salvages very often for my projects anyway because I love having the details of the names of the maker yeah, and the, yeah. the manufacturer, and even just those little dots that tell you what colours are yeah, in the print. Yeah. But they can be used, you know, in projects as well. So that's great yeah. to see that. Yeah. Okay. So with the um, binding on this one. You're sewing the binding to the front and then folding it round to the back and hand, hand finish it um, on the back. When I'm attaching the binding, I'd prefer my join not to be on the, because I'm going to go round and then there's going to be a seam where the binding will join. Yes, yeah, so you don't want it. I would to prefer front. that not to be at the front. If it is, it's fine, but I would prefer to keep that on the back. So I'm going to start sort of close to the corner. Mm -hmm. Now this is a small project, so, you know, it, it, it can be a little sort of fiddly with binding if you've not done it before. Binding a quilt's almost easier and then going yeah. and binding smaller projects, but it's not, it's not difficult and not something people should be afraid of. It's just worth thinking about where that final seam is going to end up. So I'm gonna start uh, sewing the binding on. I'm using the walking foot, and again, just with a quarter of an inch. 
I fold my, um, I mitre my corners as I'm sewing them, but I'm gonna just demonstrate to you how I do that now. Yeah. And, and I'll show you again yeah, while I'm yeah, at the machine, but, but it's gonna be easier for you to machine. see. Yeah. yeah, okay. So pretend I've sewn down here, okay? And then I come to a corner. I stop a short distance away when it's on my machine. So needle down and then I fold the binding strip so that I'm creating an angle here and it's running straight with the bottom, okay? okay? And I finger press that and then I fold it back on itself again so it's level and straight with the edges of the project. Okay, so I've just gone out that way yeah. and then back this way and that creates the little mitre. So my needle is still here. Then I took this back and I sew up to the line. Where you've pressed it, yeah. So it'll be a quarter of an inch away. I sew up to the line, leave my needle down, pivot, lift my needle, put that back. And then I move the project and I go from this side and sew a quarter of an inch. So I don't move my project. I don't clip the threads. I just keep sewing all the way around and I mitre all of the corners. Okay, yeah. Watch that back if I said that too quickly and I'll, and I'll show yeah. you now exactly um, what I do. Yeah, because I don't understand what happens with Yeah, this that's just bit. the <laughs> neatest way for me. Some people will sew a bit take it away, then fold it, and then come back. And they, people start sewing it in different places. So everybody does their binding differently. No right or wrong. Yeah. I'm just showing you the way that um, you do it. I do it, exactly. So I want a quarter of an inch um, stitch. Oh, it's and brilliant, I'm, isn't it? That it, it yeah, it is it great. Is. And I'm going to go to, um, I'm doing about a, a two. My stitch length is about two. If I'm just sewing it on a quilt, I'll normally do a 2.2 .2 stitch length. But you want to make it smaller because when you're sewing those corners, if your stitches are too big, you loop. don't get that yeah, neatness. Yeah. So I'll just do a little uh, forwards and backwards because um, just to secure the stitches. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, I've, so I've stopped, my needle's down, I'm folding the fabric, lining it up with the edge, finger press it, fold it back. And just, I just use my fingers, I just give it a good press. So you can see that I've created like a little triangle flap that becomes the mitered corner, mm -hmm. okay? So then I fold that back down, make sure everything's tucked in nicely. To the line. And I sew up to the line that I've just, it's like the crease, isn't it, that yeah, I've just created. Now that can be a bit tricky to see. But you've, if you've given it a good press, though, yeah, you can Yeah, you sort see, of get yeah. used to it. And then if, you've, if you're completely lost and you've gone, oh, I don't know if I've gone to the crease, just turn your project and it should be a quarter of an inch right, there. Okay, I know yeah. I'm level with the side there, so that'll be right. So then keep your needle down and just... So now I lift my needle. Around. Okay. Okay. Lift my foot. I pull it forward. Flip the corner over. So I've just flipped mm -hmm. that over there, bring the project back under the foot and I just sew from the edge, sometimes even just slightly off the edge so I'm sewing out right over the edge and then just carry on. So I go down to near where my other corner is. It, obviously if you're doing this on a quilt you've got a, a lot yeah. more sewing yeah. to do <laughs> down that side, it's not quite as quick as this. Yeah. And then I just repeat it. So I've got my binding strip, fold it in half, fold it, line it up with the bottom of the project, finger crease there. So I'm folding it in line with the bottom, creased it at an angle there. So that should be a perfect um, 45 degree yeah. angle there. And then fold it back and keep it in line with the project. So it's in line on this side and it's in line along the mm -hmm. bottom and then just finger press again. And then when I fold it back, I've got my crease there that shows me where to stop sewing. And then I just carry on up to the crease. Lift my foot, turn, lift my needle, pull it, pull forward. it forward, pull that back. 
Look forward and back. Do Look it again. Forward, forward and back. back. I'm just checking all the time that I'm lined up. I don't pin. I don't tend to clip unless I'm working with, say, vinyl or something that's uh, a bit trickier. I feel like the binding's going to move. Then I might clip it. But if, you know, I've done this a few times. So if you're not comfortable with it, you can, of course, pin, you know, before you, before you sew it, if you want to do that. So I've got two more corners to do. Oh, we're absolutely whizzing through. We've got still about 14 minutes. <laughs> I've got a lot to say, though. That I'm going to just so go good. really quick. <laughs> and it just becomes, you know, when you've done something a lot of times, it just becomes um, very, you know, it's almost second nature. Yeah, I don't even yeah, really think about yeah. it anymore. I just do it. And what I love about this machine as well is I've got a really nice big space here mm. to fold. What was that, sorry, Paul? Lynn. Oh yeah, Lynn was saying these are these are projects as well that she uses every single day, all daily, you know, projects. You're gonna use your needle um, book. You also get the pin cushion, which would be lovelier to use your bits of scrap fabric that you've got as well. If you love fuzzy cutting. But you can see that's really pretty. And your sewing patch as well as the needle book. OK, so I've, I'm coming up towards where it's I fine. began. OK. And I want to make sure that I'm stopping a good distance away. If this was a quilt, I would be leaving a little bit more space than this. But I wanted to make sure I'd got round that corner OK. Um, to finish the ends, you can either have the meat um, like that, yeah. which is probably the easiest way um, to do it, to be honest. And then you've just got a straight mm -hmm. line and a seam. Well, if I'm doing a quilt, I tend to do it um, like you would um, attach your binding strips. So with a mitre, because that's going to follow anywhere you've got more than one strip you're going to have a mitre where you've joined your binding strips. So in keeping with that, I like to make a mitre when I'm finishing my binding. So I simply do that by folding one side one way, one side the other way. Mm -hmm. If I've made binding strips and I want it to go the same way, I could do that opposite. doesn't matter, you know, so long as it looks like that. So essentially, you're making a cross. And again, I just finger press. And then you can pin these pieces if you want to. I tend to just take it to my sewing machine. So just make sure those are lined up. And then I just sew across that crease. And again, when you take it to your machine, you can just make sure that these, um, the ends of the binding are making a, you know, a cross. Mm -hmm. And then I just need to change this. What are you changing it to? I'm just changing it so that my needle's in the centre okay. and I'm making the stitch two. So it's a slightly smaller stitch and I do a little forwards and backwards. And what that means then is that that's going to lie nicely along here and I can just trim off the ends of the binding. So I'm just going to cut these off. That looks ever so neat now, doesn't it? Yeah. Finish? And then I can just press, press that them. open and then just go back. I don't actually press it. I just finger press it. Sorry. <laughs> Making you dance. <laughs> and then just finish that yeah, off run out the along the side. Iron. Yeah. Oh, a lot of people who actually got involved in the last hour have also got involved in this hour. Remember, you only have one PMP all day long. All day long, 2 95 all day long. So even if you're watching on a replay, and that's the great thing about the show is that, yes, you can watch it on a replay, but also on YouTube. So if there are any of those little bits that you want to re-watch and recap, you can on YouTube. Got a nice thread there, cool, there we go. Um, so there you can see that's like the mitered um, yeah. finish of the, of the binding there. 
So um, the next thing to do is hand stitch that down. I'm not going to have time to do that just no. now, but you just be folding that over and make sure you're covering that seam there when you do that. And then we need to make a tab and put the um And we're just stitching it normally, just in. an up, down, up, down, running stitch, normal. I do what like do a ladder on? stitch. Okay. So I go through the crease yeah. in the fold where I made the binding. So I go through there and then go take it into the fabric, up through the fabric, in through the crease, down. Yeah. So it's like up, across, down, up. Like okay. <laughs> Not explaining no, that very yeah, well. If are. I get time, I'll <laughs> show. But I'm just going to do the um, felt. So take that out of the way. Can we just check this side? Yeah, who is it that emailed again? Julie? Joan, sorry, Joan. Joan. Brilliant binding demo. Thank you, Lucy. Thank you. Very welcome. This is great because we never normally get to that point. No, <laughs> we don't. And it's something, you know, if you're making a quilt, you're, You're going to have to bind it, it. Yeah. yeah, so it is an important thing to, to be able to do. So it's six and a quarter by three and a half for the felt. So this is the only project that you use the felt as well, isn't it, actually? So you're going to have... Yeah, that's a good bit of, yeah. you know, good bit of felt some eyes if you're yeah. doing some of Joe's uh, toys or something like that. Um, and you just position that. It's very easy because it's not um, too much smaller. So it's very easy to See position that, centre. you know, cent centrally. And then, and what I actually did was, I actually did attach the felt before I sewed the binding, just so I could hide the um, line of yeah. it but now I've sort of got myself in a pickle, so I'm just gonna sew the line, I think as Tori did, um, yeah. just down through. So you can do this from the reverse and center it along your yeah, good um, idea. spine. Yeah. That's Tori's idea, not my idea. It <laughs> says that in the pattern. You can just follow the pattern. But I should be able to, I might do the same and do a locking stitch within the, um, within the seam there I'm just going to end with a locking stitch rather than going backwards and forwards just keeps things a little bit neater I think Geraldine, Geraldine. Hi, Lucy and Victoria. Thanks. Thank you. Victoria. See, I like this now. I said to them earlier on, I think I'm going to be Victoria. <laughs> you Hi, Lucy just Victoria. changed yeah. your name today. Well, well it just is for my, today it or is my name. No, I know that, but that's not what anybody here calls you. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh no, we all call you Dave. Okay, we'll no, Victoria, Dave. Like Victoria. <laughs> Hi, Lucy and Victoria. Thanks, Lucy, for making my corners and finished binding. So simple to do. Love and hugs, Geraldine. Thanks, Geraldine. Um, Okay, so that's the felt, and then the only thing left is the tab. So I'm going to very quickly hmm, try and do oh, the, course, yes. the tab. So um, for the tab, we're going to fold it over lengthways. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going to sew a quarter inch seam, but we're going to leave a little gap, about a one inch gap, okay? Oh, pressure, pressure. It's fine to still leave your walking foot on to do... Um, yeah, I mean, I, I know some people leave their walking foot on all the time. I don't think it really matters. It can be tricky when you've only got two layers of fabric. Yeah. To be honest, it's not sort of yeah, my favourite um, thing. But then, you know, sometimes you just have to because it's what's there. Yeah. And you don't have time to change yeah. it. But I think if you're doing, if you're doing a, a project, you know, a small project like this, you haven't really got time to be, um, changing, you know, changing it. So what I want to do then is just with my fingers, just manipulate it to get that seam in the center mm -hmm. and just press that um, open. Can you see how I did that? So I've got a little hole there because I didn't sew the full length. Tori's instructions are far better. 
<laughs> um, so no, I'm just I'm finger just pressing done. that open so that that's nice and neat. And then I'm going to sew a quarter inch yeah. um, either end. No, I'm following so, you. They're for everyone. Okay. With home okay. So just closing off the short ends there. You should be back stitching, but just for time, I'm just uh, going to whiz. Oh yeah, okay. with the fasteners as well, I'll talk about those in a And then, yeah, so I'm just going to clip the corners off just to make it easier when we turn it through. And then I'm just going to turn it out from the middle. So it's a little fiddly, but it's not too bad because you you've got that or gap, something so to just yeah, help feed it's it through. quite easy. And then I have got a little pointy turner. Thing to just help get those um, corners out. Lynn's been busy. She's made all three of these. Ah, oh, hi again, Lucy and Vicky. Now I'm downstairs and getting access to photos. Here are some of my set. Look, there's Lynn. Oh, beautiful. Oh, they look great. There you and go. And those so are in some of the Blue Liberty as well. That looks really nice. I see with the little tablet. Can you see the tab on the pink cushion? Oh, yeah. Gillian in Leicestershire. I've been quilting for over a year and I've still learned new tips on binding from Lucy. Thank you, Gillian. Like I said, there's lots of different ways of doing it. So Loads whatever of different suits ways. You, yeah, it's... and mine is like an amalgamation of all the different, you yeah. know, of lots of different ways other people do it. So it's just finding what you feel comfortable with and what gives you the best results. There's no point do it using somebody's technique if that's not, if, if you don't find it works yeah, for you. Yeah. So everybody's machine's different and everybody's techniques are going to be different. Okay, so to finish the tab, you're just going to do a little bit of hand stitching and just slip stitch that um, that hole there where that we used for turning. You just uh, close yeah. that. And then again, you're going to do some hand stitching just to attach the tab to the back. Mm -hmm. So I just, I stitched all around the three edges and then I folded it back and just stitched it to the binding, you know, so that it couldn't be pulled Pull too much. Further, so yeah. um, I just did that. You could uh, machine stitch across, you know, a, do a little yeah, square and yeah, across yeah. if you wanted to. And then you sew your, um, the male part of the fastener to the back of the tab and then the female part to the front of the uh, okay. patchwork. So I like to attach this one first, fold it over. Obviously, I haven't sewn the binding down. This is why this looks a mess. <laughs> um, and then I just press it in so I know where to attach um, the female yeah, part good of, the, idea. of the fastener. I mean, you could even use those little, um, you know, the snaps that we, we've done with the... Yeah, you could. I, yeah. Mm, yeah, I think they would fit. I think they're yeah, they're quite they're big not, actually, are they? They are quite big, but they're I think the... you might just you might just get away. I'm a big fan of those plastic yeah. pockets. I think they're brilliant. They are brilliant. But we have got these as well, by the way. These are the stat fasteners. We've uh, stolen two out of it for your demo. So it will come as borrowed. Will come as a full 20, 20 snap set. There they are, just one pound forty nine. Might as well put them into your the basket. Uh, Anne's asked a question. Is it on here or have you got it upstairs? What is Anne asking? Will the kit make all three? Yep. Yeah. There you go. You get everything you need yeah, to make all three. Yeah, everything you need to make all three. Can I just mention one yeah, of my favourite tools? Still, okay, very, very quickly. This is a tool that I really love for machine binding. And if I was going to finish this binding by machine, I would be using um, the awl to do it. So pretend... The what? Gonna, is it called the awl? All and all. Oh, yeah, okay. It's not the all. <laughs> In my mind, it's the, the all. all. Um, an all to, to do this. This is all that you use. So this is, this is the kind of thing that I use. So um, pretend I've sewn the binding down to here, okay, on my machine. This is how to mitre a corner. So whether I'm hand stitching or machine, this is how I mitre a corner on the mm -hmm. reverse side. So fold it over, I'm slip stitching down here if I'm hand stitching, or I'm top stitching along here if I'm doing it by machine. And then I'd keep that fold, and then I fold this bit over, and if I am machine stitching, I use the awl to help me tuck that section and to hold that mitre in place, so that as I'm machining, 
I can go right across. This project's a little bit small to, yeah. to machine, if I'm on it. Yeah. For me, it would be, because yeah. you'd have quite a lot of bulk in the corner. So I would do it by hand. But this is a great tip for, for binding if you did want to do it by machine. There you go. Do we, so. have, do we have one of those? Yeah, there yeah. it is. Just hold it down like that. It's is it's that all? really really good. Two ninety nine. Is that yeah, all? Yeah, but it's it's so helpful. And I and I could have used that for the poking out. You know, can use that for turning as you, well. You didn't get much out. Just is that through. all? Is that oh, all? Oh no, I don't. It's not funny. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, I used to pull yeah, my I don't before do seven o'clock. I don't do. Was that yours or was it Paul? <laughs> I can't claim it. <laughs> Not when Paul's on, you no. can't, no. So, yeah, so that's it. So you just, it's a little bit to finish by hand, but I, I like that yeah. and I especially yeah. enjoy it when it's at the end of the project because then just you just finish it. And exactly, and then yeah. it's all done and you have your beautiful liberty. Brilliant. Needle Thank book. you so much. Another fab demo. Thank you, Lisa. Right, we'll welcome. see you in an hour. Yes. We've got a brand new creative grid, haven't we? Very excited. And a lot of people have I'm been asking excited. you about it, haven't they? Pineapple. Yeah. It's coming up. So thank you ever so much, Lucy. Thank you. Right, we've got one minute and we're going to whiz through the packs. Which one? The blue. Let's go for the one that Lucy's been demoing with. And that is the blue Liberty Charm pack. You're going to have oodles and oodles of fabric to play with. You also have half a metre, well, of the, the rainbow kit. You have half a metre of the linear um, and whichever kit that you choose, whichever colour. You also get the felt, the interfacing, the zip, the thread, the wadding and instructions as well. So it's a really, really, really beautiful bundle and a big bundle that we've put together. You get a lot there for your money, including this. So this is the other one, the Bright. The Bright Liberty Sewing Collection with, of course, half a metre of linear, felt, thread, interfacing, zip, uh, instructions and wadding. And, of course, you can get the Liberty on... Oh, sold out, sold out. OK, Jules is on her way back with another, brand, in fact, two brand new patterns. So don't go anywhere. We'll see you after this. Follow us on Pinterest, search for our Sewing Quarter page and follow us to discover sewing work we create and love. Tune in on Saturday the 26th of May for an hour of modern quilting with Lucy Brennan and her Honey Bloom design. Oversized petals are created with the help of the ingenious Creative Grids Roundup tool, then scattered from the centre outwards and appliqued in place. These large-scale petals are perfect for showcasing intricately patterned fabric and we have a choice of three kits, each with their own standout prints. Choose from tea rose and turquoise, ebony and lime and raspberry and duck egg. So join us for an hour that's blooming with gorgeous fabric and clever tools. Saturday the 26th of May at 10am, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 687. So today I'm going to show you how to do a double stitch. Now you would use a double stitch at the start and the end of your sewing to uh, secure your threads rather than using a rig, really big knot. You're going to want to take your needle through the front of your fabric first and then come out back through the front. So I'm using really big stitches at the moment so I can see what I'm doing. You're going to leave a tail before you then repeat that in and out motion. So you can see that's one. I'm going to go back through again and that's two. So you can see I've done two stitches in the same place. That's giving me my double stitch. You would then do whatever stitch it is that you're going to go on to do. So I'm just going to do a quick running stitch. OK, so now I'm going to do my double stitch at the very end of my uh, stitch there. So it's repeating the process. So I'm going in and then back out, in and then back out before clipping my threads. So obviously you would clip these closer when you get to uh, finishing your garment. So there you have it. The Sewing Quarter website is simple and easy to use. You can view a live broadcast of the show on our homepage. Get instant access to our online shop, which has a wide range of wonderful products for you to choose from. You can also enjoy a selection of projects and guides which we have on offer to help you enhance your skills and gain valuable tips.
Watch the live shows and you can buy the product which is currently being shown on air. You can even message the studio to ask our presenters or team any questions you might have. Below, you'll find all the products from today's show for you to look at and purchase. On the right of the screen, next to today's products, you will find our simple programme guide listing all upcoming shows. So, join us today at sewingquarter.com. Tune in on Monday the 28th of May for complete pandemonium caused by the one and only Joe Carter. At 9am, Jo reveals her brand new softy, a cuddly panda. She'll be showing us how to sew this cute character, so all you have to do is order the kit and prepare to dive into all that soft, plush fabric. If one panda isn't enough, we also have Jo's iconic panda pop quilt design, complete with kits featuring colourful fabric by Heather Bailey and Tilda. At 11am, Joe's back with a clever drawstring tote bag design, although there are no pandas here. There is a choice of five kits, including an adorable sausage dog motif. So join us for Animal Magic, Joe Carter style, Monday the 28th of May at 9am and 11am, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 687. Welcome back to a rainy day. Oh, it's a perfect day to sit in front of the telly and or in front of the sewing machine and get on with some great makes. In fact, speaking of great makes, we've got two brand new dressmaking patterns by the fabulous Jules. She is here to demo how to do them because these are both brand, brand new. So which one do you want to see? Miranda. I love that you name them all as well. Uh, uh, this is Miranda. Um, and we will see exactly how to do it. So once again, we talked about this earlier on in the last hour, but the packaging and the instructions are written and made with love. They really, really are. So this is a brand new pattern to Sewing Quarter. Um, it is written by Julia herself. Uh, it's 16 pounds. And it is that lovely dress which in fact this is is this the actual one that you're wearing yes, yes. so uh, julia is actually wearing it today there it is we've got it on the mannequin uh and it looks completely different in different fabric ways as well doesn't it and there's lots of different uh, variations as it is brand new i really recommend you check out early on please do check out early on because that i've got a feeling we'll sell out by the end of the show the other one is called celia this is Celia, and this is, is absolutely brand new as well. This has never been on air before. And I love those cuffed, uh, ruched sort of sleeves. They're really nice, aren't they? It reminds me of, have you seen the, the newspapers? There were three people at the royal wedding that were all wearing the same dress, and they were different colours, so they did look different. But they were the same dress, and they had sleeves just like this. That's what it reminded me of. Um, but, yeah, that's a really beautiful one, and it's a really lovely pattern as well. Beginners for beginners. Now we have chosen some really, really lovely fabric to go with, which I will absolutely fly through because we want to get over to Julia. This is your cotton lawn fabric. This is the one that you've seen on the mannequin. We'll start with this one. So it's 6.99 for half meter. Very summery, isn't it? Lovely for your holidays, if you've got your holidays to look forward to. This is the one that Jules has already made for us. It's there on the mannequin, and it works so well with that bold print, doesn't it? Really, really nice. Now, this next one is the one that we're going to demo with. Loads, loads of us here in the office absolutely love this, including fashionista, producer Paul. The feathers. That's really, really lovely, isn't it? 6 99 for half metre. It's ever so soft, luxury cotton lawn fabric. 6 99 for half a metre. And how much are we going to need? Again, same two, is it? No, that was, we'll, have to, we'll find out how much you're going to need for the different sizes. I'll ask Julia in a minute. The last, next two, they look like the denim, but they're not. They're chambray. Chambray? That's right. Yeah, that's right. 
So this is chambray, and I think this would be really lovely for the summer as well. With the ditzy floor print on, 4 99 for half a metre, 100% cotton. Chambre, uh, a different sort of floral. Again, with chambre, though. Half a metre for 4 99 Remember, it goes up in half metre increments, so if you want one metre, that would be two units. And that's where my math stops, so <laughs> we'll stop there, but you get it. OK. Completely different look, very, very summery. And, oh, look at that. Can you, I don't know whether you can see it on, in fact, let me turn it around and you'll be able to see it. What kind of bird is it? A chaffinch, golden chaffinch, can you spot it? Look at him there. Yeah, that is gonna look really, really lovely in the dress. So this is lawn fabric again, it's ever so soft, really beautiful. It's going to be really nice to work with. You've also got... This is Moonlight. This is... What's it called? Finchley Moonlight. So then you've got the finches again. See, that is really, really beautiful. If you... You know, maybe you're not as bold enough to go for the really bright colours, but this is still very detailed and very feminine, really beautiful. £6.99 for the half metre. And as Julia said in the uh, last show that we did with her, invest in the, the, the really, in the nice quality fabrics because it does make a difference, one obviously on the finish, but also on, uh, on sewing. It, it makes it so much easier. Not doing very well with my folding. Uh, the last three we are extremely, extremely limited with. The peacock feathers, the two of these are awesome. I absolutely love this one. I think that's my favourite. I don't want to have favourites. I don't like favourites. I love them all. But look at that. That's awesome, isn't it? Very limited. If you want it, check out, check out, check out. We've also got the uh, same pattern, but in turquoise. Very summer, isn't it? Oh, I can imagine you rocking a, a shirt in this pool. £5.99 for half a metre. And this one is so pretty once again, isn't it? Most limited. This is the most limited. There's loads of butterflies that are flying all around, aren't they? I think that's the direction, isn't it? <laughs> 6 99 for half a metre. That is the cotton lawn again. OK, we've got two new makes to have a look at. So let's take these across. This is what we're going to create. And you're back. Thank you Hello. so much. Hi. Mm -hmm. Thank nice you very, you very much. Lovely to see you. And two new patterns. Yes. So it's great, as we said, to recap. We did the yeah. other ones before, but we love having something new to do. So... Well, the Miranda is a brand new one. You're wearing it I as am. well. I am. I've got version two on. Right, OK. So two. how many versions... There's two versions on there. So what are the differences? You've got This the... is version one. OK. So this is kind of like the full Monty. Yeah. So it's got the uh, pockets that are incorporated into the side panel of the skirt. It's got the three-quarter length sleeve that have the kind of notched cuff. Yeah. And it's also got the notched facing, notched kind of like neck edge as well. So that's, that's kind of got everything on it. Okay. Version two is a lot more pared back. Yeah. So I've just got the short sleeves, a round neck and no pockets. Yeah. So it's quick and easy to yeah. do this one. Brilliant. And you can see on the front there, it's got the pictures of the details. How hard is it? The first thing that I would be scared of is doing the measurements and making sure I've got enough fabric that's going to fit and... All of the information that you're going to need is on the back of the pattern. OK. So on the back there, what's key is the finished garment measurements. So those are always at the bottom. Now, you can try having a look and seeing what size you would normally wear. Mm -hmm. So whether you're an 8, 10, 12 or whatever. Um, We've also then got the bust measurements and the waist and the hip measurements, the body measurements mm -hmm. for that particular size. So you could follow that down, have a look and see where you would fit on that chart and then go down even further and you'll see what the actual finished garment measures. 
Brilliant. So you'll see, now there, there will be a difference between yeah. the body measurement and the garment measurement. Yeah. And that's called ease. Yeah. So it's the space that you've got yeah. to move inside yeah. the garment, really. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's fantastic. That's really. Well, um, it's all there for you, yeah, isn't it's it? All there. some can look, some patterns that I've picked up as a beginner and thinking, yeah. this just looks way too complicated. And they're in loads of languages and, and you have to find which where to exactly. start. So yeah. I love your instructions already. Thank you. Okay, so do we do it in sections? I know that you showed me this earlier on and it was actually a top and you said we'd do the bodice and yes. all separately. Yes, what I wanted to do was to focus on one of the, the kind of more complicated aspects yes. of it. Um, so what I've done is I've kind of made one um, part way through just to kind of show you what we've done. So what I've done first of all, if I flip that over, so the bodice makes up first. That's actually very straightforward. So you've got a center panel, you've got two side fronts, two side backs and two back pieces. So they all kind of go together all lined up. You've got notches on the actual pattern pieces there that will show you how everything goes together. So I don't know if you remember previously, we were talking about double notches for the back and yeah. single notches for the front. Yeah. It still applies here as well. Okay, yeah. So we've got a double notch on the back that shows you that all the back pieces go together and a single notch is on the front to show you all the front pieces mm -hmm. that go together. So those are all stitched together nice and neatly. What I've also done is done the sleeve. Now the sleeve is a very straightforward one to do. It's a set in sleeve, which means that you create the armhole first and then set the sleeve into the armhole. Mm -hmm. Really nice and simple to do. And you can choose the length of the sleeve exactly. that you want. Exactly, yeah. I mean, this one, it just fits yeah. just to kind of like the elbow, but the three quarter length one comes just sort of down to about there. Then what I've done, now this is what I wanted to show as well, was how to do one of the um, pockets on the side front, because it's made up of several different pieces and it can get a little bit complicated. But the best thing to do with this is to actually lay them all out how you want them to look when it's finished. Okay. So if I kind of unfold that, you can see that it almost creates like a zigzag shape. So we've actually, this so is this bit. So they're so long, aren't they? This, yeah, is, the, this nice. is the panel, isn't it? Yes. So is that what this is? This is that panel? That's this panel here. But okay. the pocket only goes down yeah, to there. Yeah. So that's what we've created. We've yeah. created a, a, almost like a pleat yeah. that we use to make up the pocket. Right, okay. And we've got a separate pocket band on here. So you yeah, could use that lovely. for like a contrast fabric yeah. or something like that. So it just gives it a bit more individuality, Definition. really. Yeah, yeah. lovely. What I've done as well is I've already pinched out the little pleats. If we do that now, whilst the pits are kind of flat, it makes it a lot easier than okay. trying to do it once you've got the skirt all together. Mm -hmm. So this would be the little pleat on the side here. Yeah. Okay, so I've done that and I've also machine basted it. Now basting is basically like tacking. Loose. Yeah. Yeah, so we've done that. Then what I've done is folded up. We've got the, um, the pocket bag. And then we've got the pocket tops and then we've got the rest of the skirt. Mm -hmm. So we've stitched all of those together, pressed all the seams in towards the actual pocket band here. And that keeps everything nice and neat and clean and tidy. If you've got um, a slightly heavier fabric, you can press the seams open and that will reduce the bulk a little bit. So you'd press the seams open and flat like a book yeah. like that. Um, but because we've got a nice lightweight fabric, it doesn't, it doesn't matter really. Now, the only seam I've neatened or overlocked is this bottom one here. And that's the only seam that's actually going to be visible once you've actually put the whole thing together. Okay. So if that folds down and then flip that over, you can see that this is the bit, this is the bit that creates the, the pocket. pocket. And that's the bit that I've actually neatened. So that's the, bit that's only, the only bit that's going to be visible. The other thing that's worth noting is that when you lie everything flat, the top doesn't match. So because we've, so you can see it kind of hangs mm -hmm. over a little bit here. This is because we've got the extra fullness in this section for the pleat. So all you're going to do is make it match. So you don't have to worry. Don't worry about trying to trim bits off because it's you know, not, you it's not it sitting flat. Yeah. You, you haven't done it wrong. It's designed like that. <laughs> so what we're going to do is line those up. And that gives you the extra little bit of fabric that you need in the centre here. Right. To get and that it, gather. Yeah. And it makes the pockets 
sit. So you, they're, you've got a little bit of, yeah. they're kind of standing away slightly, yeah. but they're not too big and baggy. So I'm just going to pin those in place. See, there are so many different ways of doing pockets, aren't there? Oh, I'm, gosh. I'm constantly putting pockets on everything now because I've learned how to do yeah. them. Yeah. There's quite a nice section in the book, actually, about pockets. Oh, lovely. Yeah, we'll show you that in a bit. I haven't shown it yet, but it's a dressmaking book that we have we have seen it on air before, but we'll bring it back. By the way, if you have got it in your basket, uh, this, this dress pattern, then we cannot guarantee your order. You must check out over half of you have already checked out so well done um if you've already checked out then you've guaranteed you've got it we know that you love jules's pattern so we knew it would be popular but this will sell out everybody has put it in their basket but you need to check out if you want it brilliant thank you <laughs> so what we've got now is i've got one kind of part done so that's how it actually attaches into your skirt mm -hmm. section so you've got the center front panel here and then your side panel will kind of fit on like that. Right. Now again, don't worry too much because there's a gap at the top. That's because when we make up the patterns, you've got, we've got a little bit of fitting involved and darts, which are a form of suppression yeah. that give you that shaping yeah. can be turned into seams. Okay. So that's why we've got that kind of slightly angular shape there. But again, you've got notches on here that will show you how everything goes together. So you've got the two little notches there, so you can make sure that you get it around the right, right side. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, those we can there. see it. Just Brilliant. about. Yeah. So that will get flipped. And again, the best way to work it is if you lay it all out flat first, and put it together so you it's how you want it to sit mm -hmm. when it's finished. Then you can kind of start putting all the bits together. Yeah. And it makes sense. Then. It's quite nice that actually this. Would you say it's directional? It's well, they're all overlapping, so they it doesn't are, really yeah. matter about lining I think it's, up. Yeah. Too much. The, um, the layout diagram that we've included in the pattern is for um, what they call a nap or a one-way design. Right, okay. So it means all the paces are facing in the right yeah, direction, so yeah. you should be okay. Oh, great. Sometimes it takes a little bit of fabric, but just it just happens to have worked yeah. out this way that actually it's fine. So how much fabric do we need? It's all on there, is it? It is all on there. It's about two and a half metres again. Okay. So, yeah, depending on which version. So version Thank one you. has fewer pieces. Yeah. So that won't take quite so much fabric. I think that's about two metres, 220. OK. And then the longer version is about two and a half, I think. There we go. If you, uh, yeah, if you speak to our customer service team, they'll be able to help you out anyway. I should know, because I did actually design the pattern. <laughs> You'd think I would remember, wouldn't you, really? But there we go. I bet you now just know how to do it. You just run and we can just go with it. I very rarely look at instructions because yeah. it's kind of, you put it together in your head as you're, yeah. as you're doing it. But yeah. So that one goes on to there. And then it will join on to the other side of the back piece as well. Now, I've, it looks a bit complicated because what I've done is I've part joined it to the waist. But what I can do is flip that back over if I pin it all together first, it'll kind of make sense. And then what I want to do is to show you the next bit, which is the bit that people get quite scared about, but it's not really scary at all, which is putting in the zip. Mm-hmm, yeah, especially because it's a concealed zip, isn't it? Yes, these are actually a lot easier. Oh, really? And much easier to put in than a normal in zip. Fact, I can show you on the back of this. Oh, let's spin around. Look, I love that. I know. I've not seen one of these yet. This is the first time I will have done this, so. Brilliant. I've seen a zip. Come on. This it's is definitely sealed. also, you're getting a little bit of a Brucey bonus here, actually, because uh, what I want to do is to show you how to put a lining in the bodice. Because this fabric is very lightweight, yeah. normally, I mean, this one I haven't bothered yeah, to line because the fabric's yeah. a little bit more yeah. substantial. But because this is cotton lawn, it's quite a lightweight, soft fabric. And if we line the bodice, which is what we've done with this one, it just helps it to sit better and it gives a better line and it makes the garment... Oh, um, brilliant. Yeah. OK. And you better quality. do that whilst you're doing it. Yes, do yeah. it as you're making it up. Yeah. So basically, the way it works, if you make up your dress first, 
and then I'll show you how to make up the, um, the lining. So you've got two separate things. And then when we put the zip in, we kind of put it all together. Right, okay. So I've just pinned that for now. So we've got a proper skirt. Now, do you want me to sew the seams or shall I move on to the next um, bit? What do you think, producer? Yeah, we're fine, we're fine. We've still got loads of time. Oh, brilliant, that's good. Now, what we can do then, I want to... There we go. Just to make sure those are yeah. nestled in. Now, I'm popping my pins in, in a very certain, in a particular kind of way. What I like to do, and again, do you know what? It's horses for courses, but I tend to try and do things that make things a bit easier. What I've done is I've actually, if I turn it around, you can see it that way. There we go. So I've pinned, so my pin heads are hanging off the edge of the fabric. Now this makes it a lot easier to A, take the pins out mm -hmm. as you go, and B, if you need to keep them in, you can stitch over them. So rather than pinning them horizontally or along the yeah, seam, yeah, I understand. it makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, good idea, good top tip. There we go, we like top tips. They make things easier. Right, let's get onto the machine. And I'm just going to do a normal 1.5 seam allowance, but not with this foot. <laughs> this <laughs> what is foot's the foot. that? This is a concealed zip foot, uh, actually. I will okay, show you that in a minute. Yeah. I I've haven't swapped it those. over. Is Ooh. that different to a zipper foot? Yes, yes, yes they are different. Um, and there is a key difference, but they're very easy to get hold of. So I'm just going to and do my reverse just to secure that at the start. Now, also what you might have noticed is that I haven't got a huge number of pins in here. Um, one of the things that we find in our beginner's sewing is that people kind of like to over pin. Over pin, that's me, yeah. Because you kind of think, oh no, I it's got to, to stay there. Together, yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually fabric is quite well behaved. And sometimes having more pins can actually distort things. Mm -hmm. So here we're just doing a really simple straight seam. So it's not really gonna go anywhere. It's a nice well-behaved cotton fabric. So you don't need to. What I usually say to um, the people coming onto our beginners courses is uh, if you kind of start as a rule of thumb, to pin a hand width apart. Okay. And that way you know you're not gonna over pin. Now here I've probably done two hand widths apart. So what you would do is, let's straighten that off. It's kind of roughly, mm -hmm. roughly yeah. about four yeah. inches apart. Okay. And they, that way you know that you're not gonna over pin, but you've got enough there to hold everything in place. Your husband's got in touch with us. Oh, has he? I thought he might. It's <laughs> on my iPad. <laughs> oh. Oh, hang on, I can't see it. Um, just checked, it can make 290 metres, sorry, it can take 2.9 metres of fabric for the larger sizes. Oh, happy wedding anniversary oh, it was yesterday. for yesterday, my <laughs> darling Jules. Oh, dear. Oh, how romantic, that's amazing. Thanks, oh. Charles, is it? Charlie. Charlie, yes. Charlie, oh, Charlie. Yes, he's That's here. lovely. Did you have a nice wedding anniversary? We did, thank you. We went out for a lovely meal last night at a restaurant in uh, Stratford. Salt, actually. Thoroughly recommend it. Oh, fantastic. It was amazing food. Yeah. You've got, you're spoiled for choice where you live, aren't you? Oh, the do you know what? We really are, actually, yeah. I think you could probably eat somewhere different almost every day. Yeah, you could, yeah. Oh, how lovely is that? Thank you ever so much. He's a bit soppy, my husband. Oh. But uh, he's very lovely. I'm very lucky. I'm going to stop warning. The pattern, Miranda. The brand new Miranda pattern, if everybody checks out, it's completely gone. It is completely gone. I know 24 of you have got it in your basket and you're yet to check out. Uh, I believe now there's 23 left, so you aren't... Yeah, if you definitely want mm. it, there's more of you that have got it in your basket than we have available in stock, so... Oh, gosh. Make the most of it. Getting quick. <laughs> there we go. So we've stitched it all together, so you can see how that skirt works now. So you've got that centre front panel, mm. and then you've got the two pockets... Lovely. ...either side. What we want to do now is to attach it to the bodice. So because I've kind of pre-done a little bit for tele-sewing, mm -hmm. Again, what we're going to do is flip the right sides together. 
Now, normally, I'd overlock those, but that's fine because it's tele sewing, which is what I've done <laughs> on here. So I've overlocked your, the seams just to neaten everything off. So overlockers aren't just for jersey fabric. Okay. You just want to have one next to you. Yeah. And so you can kind of switch between sewing machine yeah, and overlocker. Yeah. They're fab. Oh, you, I just find myself overlocking everything. What oh, in my house I know. Can I overlock? <laughs> yeah. They're great, actually, because, um, oh gosh, I was at the Festival of Quilts, oh god, I can't remember, a year or so ago, which is coming up soon, actually. I don't know if you guys are probably going to be yeah, there, Yeah, they? yeah, yeah, we will be. We'll be there, too. Um, and they had, uh, there was a textile artist, and she had used all the kind of little bits, all the tails of the overlocking, and incorporated it into her stitched artwork. Oh, it nice. looked amazing, it really did. It was really cool. So what I'm doing is I'm pinning... I'm matching up all the key points. Yeah. So all the seams will match. They'll all line, they all line up, line up together. In. That's it. And then the pleats match. Well, the back one matches with the seam and the front one, there will be a mark on your pattern. Yeah. And that's where you match up the pleat to. So the pleat actually sits in the middle of that side front. Mm -hmm. So it's this bit here, just there. We've got still about seven minutes left. Are we going to have a chance to show the zip as well? If you think we will. Yeah, yeah. I can do it. That's pinned. So what I want to do then, I've just done one side of the zip. Now these are a thing of beauty and a joy to behold. They really are. They make your dresses look so much nicer. Oh, I love that concealed zip. Yeah, it's yeah, really, really they're beautiful. Brilliant. Now, what I've done is I've stitched one side already. Okay. And there's a really good tip here, actually, with preparing your zip first. You can unroll, because the zips are a coil. So they are not just your ordinary zips, no, are they? No, no, they are concealed zips. Yes. The way, the way you can tell it's a concealed zip is all the mechanics of it is on the back. Okay. But the front of it just looks completely right. flat. You can prepare your zip by unrolling the coil. There we go. If you can just see there, the actual zip teeth are coiled inside. So if you use a warm iron and just press it, just unroll that coil and press it flat, then it helps the needle get just into that groove there so that you get in nice and close and you get a nice clean looking zip. There you go, another top tip. There we go. Now I've stitched one side, so what I need to do is to match up the waist seam on the other side. So to do that, because when you're on the back here, we want those two seams to kind of meet in the middle. Meet up, yeah. There's nothing worse than it kind of no, just steps yeah. and it's, yeah. So if we do the zip up and then match up your seams, so you can see where they are lying. Then you can pin those together like mm -hmm. that. So you know that that bit's going to sit there and we can put a pin in there to hold that in place. I do love these yellow pins. They're brilliant, they're nice and long and you can yeah, they are long. see and where, they, exactly where they are. Exactly with the yellow. Yeah, yellow's my favorite color. <laughs> This ring, we must mention it as well. It's fantastic, isn't it? I love that. <laughs> I've never seen one that's all liquid inside. That's so I cool. I know, they're really funny. <laughs> there we go. Now, what we want to do, now most of the zips have, again on here, you can see there's the top of the zip, which is that plasticky bit just there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see. So it's that little plastic bit where you can kind of bend it and it stops bending. So that's the top edge of the zip. That needs to sit a centimetre and a half down from the cut edge of your fabric here. So that wants to just sit. Now, most of the time, if you get a quality zip, you'll find that the cut edge, that little bit, the cut edge at the top there is a centimetre and a half away yeah. from the top edge of the zip. Okay. So you can use it as a guide. So if you just match up, the top of the zip with the top edge of your yeah. fabric, you know you're in the right place. Brilliant. And we've got that bit there. Now, those are the only two pins I'm going to use. OK. <gasps> that's so, scary for me. Sewing oh, by the seat of yeah. my pants. Yeah. No, that's fine. <laughs> there we go. Now, this is where we need a concealed zip. Right, foot. OK. So you wouldn't use your normal zip No, foot. not as normal zip foot. Now, what I want to do again is, if you can have a quick look on here, 
you can see it's got two grooves. Mm -hmm. So there we go. So they, the coil of the zip runs in each side, depending on whether you're doing the left or the right hand side of the zip. And it's got a little nose like that. So that little nose bit goes at the front and, it tell, and that sits on the zip tape so you know which way around you're going. So they clip on, on these machines. There we go. Now, because I'm doing the left-hand side, I need to be in the left-hand groove. Right. So, and because I've pressed the zip already, there we go. Now I'm starting about a centimetre in from the edge so that I can reverse and then come forward. Okay. So it means I'm not trying to get over the hump of the zip to start off with. There we go. So you're putting all this in before we'd line the garment? Yes, yeah. yeah. Now, again, I can use the overlocking as my guide because you want your stitching line to be 1.5 centimetres in. And it just so happens that if I'm lining the edge of the fabric there on that 15 line on the plate of the machine, because you've got your seam allowance guides here, the zipped teeth sit on that 1.5 stitching line if I line the tape up with the overlocker. So what I'm going to do is hold two fingers down with the tape and then roll it back, roll the teeth back with the other hand. And then I'm just gonna sew and then move each finger as I get to it. Oops, there we go. So again, I'm just gonna hold two fingers and roll it back. So it's actually a lot Very quicker. Simple, yeah. It really is. The nice thing, I mean, a lot of sewing processes, because they come from industry, which this one does, industrial sewing or process sewing... It's very fast. It yeah. is fast, just by its pure, its nature. It has to be quick and easy yeah, yeah. and effective to do. And it helps if you have a, <laughs> a bigger <laughs> a table, table just to fold everything up, yeah. <laughs> there we go. You want to watch when you get to that waist seam that the whole seam goes up okay. underneath. So it goes up into the bodice. There we go. Just make sure that stays in place. And slightly differently to a normal dress zip, you would go right to the end of the zip tape. But here, because of the way we're putting the zip in and we're stitching so close to those teeth, the block of the concealed zip foot will hit the zip head and that's when we just stop. Right, okay. So don't try and push past it and go onto the zip tape. So you just get to the bottom, go as far just as it'll go there. and then do a reverse. Now, I know it looked really easy so we can actually do that up now the other thing is once sometimes they get a bit twisted so that kind of folds back mm -hmm. out and you think oh no it's gone the wrong way no, just um... just tuck it back inside again there we go and that's your zip oh, completely so clean is concealed it? and oh look at that with a bit of luck and a following wind. Perfect. We've got, we've got the same match. Out. That is perfect. <laughs> perfect. Uh, so before we just have a look at the uh, next pattern, can we we need to, yeah have a look at the lining? So I'm quickly. just going to show you quickly about the lining, because what I've done now in your pattern, there's um, the facings are included. Okay. So the facings are the bits that will neaten off around the neckline. Right. So they kind of mirror the shape of the neck. So on here, it's the bit that's tucked down inside. So you've got the same fabric inside as you have outside. Lovely. You could, if you wanted to, have, have a complete a contrast, contrast yeah. which could look really interesting. Now, what I've yeah. done, and one of the reasons that we've made the neck facings this shape is that it makes it easy to line. So all I've done is I've cut out my neck facing pieces and I've cut out exactly the same shape as the main bodice in lining. Right. And then I've neatened the edge of the facing here and just laid it straight on top 
and just stitched it through. Mm -hmm. So you've got the two layers together there and then just made it up as if it was exactly the same as a normal bodice. So you've got the side fronts, side backs and side seams all together there. Perfect. So to put this in, we're going to match everything up but we're not going to sew around the neckline first. At what point would you do this lining? Would you finish make up, make up the, the whole, whole skirt? The whole, yeah, yeah, the whole dress. So you'd, where we put the zip in, you've noticed that we put the zip in first and then we would stitch the seam up. Yeah. With a normal zip, you stitch the seam up and leave a gap and then you would put the zip in afterwards. Okay. So we do it, it yeah. a little bit back to front, but yeah. it, it works. But what I want to show you is this really cool thing here with the zip. So all I'm doing at the moment is I've just matched up the shoulder seams with the lining. Now normally you would match the centre backs together but because we're going to do it in a really clever way mm -hmm. and this is in the book so if you're stuck with this all the instructions are in the book to show you how to do. I'm going to flip it over so I've got the garment on top and the lining and the facing underneath now, you've also noticed that I've actually put interfacing on the centre back. Right. That's just to support the fabric when we put the zip in, because it's quite a lightweight fabric. I didn't bother with the one I'm wearing, because okay. it's a bit more substantial. What we want to do is to pull the lining and the facing out by a centimetre. So you can see it protruding. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to pin... all the way down. Now, if I open that back out, you'll see what's happened. We've actually pulled the facing away from the zip. So the zip's sitting here, and you've actually got the facing coming away from the zip. So on this one, what we've done is we've pulled the facing away from the zip there. Yeah. So it gives it a really yeah, nice, yeah. nice finish. These are all the lovely details that when you're wearing it, no one sees, but you feel it and it's, it is the professional finish. This is it? the wonderful thing about making yeah. handmade clothes. Yeah. Is that you know the attention to detail and the care I bet you can walk around shops it. now and say, how have they left it like that? How have they left it like that? And charging a fortune. I know, exactly. So what is it that you're going to do now? You're just going so to stitch I'm this just in. Gonna, I'm going to do a little bit. Because we can go and have a look at the uh, fabrics again if you yeah. want to. If you do that, up. I'll do this little bit yeah. first okay, for you, and then brilliant. we'll come back. Yeah. All right. Uh, so the, the pattern, by the way, the patterns, I'm not even going to show you because they're pretty much sold out. If you have got it in your basket, have a go. But um, the, the dress pattern is certainly, I think, gone or very, very low. Um, the new other new pattern I will talk to you about in a minute. So the fabrics. The one that you've seen on the mannequin is this one. It's so bold, so beautiful, lovely for this time of year. But then I can imagine it at sort of autumn time with like a teal cardigan or something. It would look lovely. $6.99 if you want to have a go at... I mean, Julia has, has taken a step by step to all of these... Um, to how to make these perfectly, so you can watch back on YouTube. We've also got the one that Jules has been demoing with, the feathers, which I love because it's overlapping and you don't see where one part of the fabric ends to the next, if you know what I mean, when you're stitching together all of the different parts. This is your cotton lawn, 6 99 for half a metre. So many of you have got it in your basket. Please do check out. Now the chambray, we have two different um, two different stars. We've got this, well, both floral. We've got this one, four ninety nine half a meter. A lot of people have got this in their basket. Thirteen people have not yet checked out. It's incredibly limited, and it's not yours until you confirm. I must reiterate because we've had people missing out today. Um, we've also got this other ditzy, really pretty print. This is your chambray. It looks like that sort of denim sort of feel, but it's not like your, your jeans. <laughs> yeah, I was going to um, do a high kick. 
Four nights down for half a meter. <laughs> I love this. It's so soft as well. It's really beautiful. This is your golden gold. Gold, gold, gold. Oh, the gold, gold, gold. Gold chaff inch. Where are they? I'm upside down. Or are they hanging upside down? But the great thing about the pattern as well is, is it's all there that you can actually set all of your fabric out so that you know that you're facing the right direction. Now we're going to go for this one. Half a metre is 6.99. For the largest size, uh, Charlie said that it's 2.9 metres, didn't he? Thank you, Charlie. Yay! Oh, I don't want to... Um, I'm not a, a, a trendsetter, but this one is the most popular. And this is the one that I love. I absolutely love that. It is the most popular. Is it this one or is it the other one? It's the blue one, isn't it? Or turquoise. It's that one. It's this one. It's this one. That one's that one, sorry. That one's that one. The turquoise is this one. Okay. 5.99. Jules mentioned her book. You've seen it on air before. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous book. Oh, I just literally opened it on where it said zip. So you've got everything explained in thorough, thorough detail. It is a complete guide to dressmaking. So whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or if you're more advanced, it's got so many top tips. And I know so many people that um, I was reading a letter that we had from one of our viewers in the, um, in the kitchen earlier on. And it was a lady who's been sewing for years and years and years and years. And she said, you're still, still learning so much. So there's always... Lots more tips that you can get. So that's a gorgeous book, $15.99. Uh, Jules was mentioning it earlier, actually. There's lots of techniques in there. So enjoy that as well. Now, before we end the hour, we will look at the Celia. I know that we're ever so um, late on time. But if you want... Oh, no. The lining is all there on the website as well. I think Paul's added that through. The Celia pattern... I will just borrow it. This is another brand new pattern. Now, unfortunately, we're not going to have time. We will have to get Jules back to do a full, full demo on this one, but she's going to show us some key points on the Celia top. Those lovely ruched sleeves, isn't it lovely? So if you know how to make, you know, your standard sort of top, this is just to then em embellish. You could use this for a lot of projects. I love that. That is really different, isn't it? The it's ruched sleeves nice in the bottom. One. So how long is this? It kind of comes to about hip length. Okay. And then the frill just takes it a little bit longer. Nice. But it looks really nice without the frills. Okay. So if you're not a kind of a gathery, frilly really? kind of person, then it works really nicely as well. Right, okay. We will come to that before the end of the hour, but mm. we'll just um, So what I've done is we've pulled out by a centimetre so you can see a little bit of the facing kind of protruding and then kind of blended it back in so that it matches up at the bottom also what I've done is to just fold over as you can see it on that side there we go so I've folded up the hem of the lining this means that it's already folded for when we come to turn it round and stitch it down the right way round and what we want to do now and this is where it gets interesting is rather than kind of sitting and leaving it like that you'll notice that you get like a little bit of a bulge mm -hmm. here. So what we're going to do is instead of folding it on the seam that we've stitched, we're gonna fold it on the zip and then everything folds back again on itself. There we go. So that pulls away. You can feel the zip in the crease there and then it all kind of sits nice and flat and matches. Actually, I can't pin it that way. I'm gonna have to turn around the other way to pin. We've got about 10 minutes. Um, if do you want to go back onto the ceiling? We do want to yeah. just walk through some steps um, before, within the next 10 minutes. Yeah, there we go. And then you would just stitch normally around the neck and that's it. Lovely. Thank you ever so much. If you've got any questions for Jules as well, then please, please, please do ask. But you yeah. can watch all this back on, on, um, on YouTube. Now, do you need the overlocker for this? 
No, we've not got. Um, I can talk you through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Celia. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, that's fine. Um, but we haven't got any fabric for that here. But it would work really well with any of the fabrics that you've got for the Miranda, actually. Okay, so okay. It's so a nice soft top. Yeah. Uh, in this, then, go ahead. What do we? What do we need? What do we need to know? It's a very simple. So in actual fact, it's got a facing, which is very like the Miranda. Mm -hmm. So we've got the same kind of shaping going on around the neckline here. Um, if I turn it around that way, you can see it. There we go. So the facing comes around the neck here, which gives it a really nice clean finish. Now what I will do actually, which kind of both of them apply is on here. So you can see the facing comes around the neckline here. One thing that I haven't done, but you might be able to see it, yes. is under stitching. Yeah. I don't know if that's been covered. Yeah, it here. is. Yeah, yeah, we can see it. There we go. That's really important. And it's one of the things that people kind of tend Why to miss out. Why would you a do that? Bit. If I can stitch this bit, yeah. I will explain. Yeah. Because it's a key thing, actually, that goes over loads of different patterns. Um, I'm just going to stitch around here quickly. And then, now, the one thing that you must do when you're stitching across the top of the zip is to go right off the fabric and then back on again. But the one thing um, with understitching, it kind of, as with a lot of terms in sewing, they kind of do what they say on the tin. So understitching holds it under. Mm -hmm. So if we want the face facing to stay hidden inside the garment and not kind of poke out above the neckline, we need to understitch it. And I can show you what that is. What I'm going to do, I'm only going to do a little bit of this. There we go. If I just do a little bit of that, now we can clip. Now, because you've got a curved neckline, and again, this applies to the cilia, you've got that curved shape, and we want to be able to turn it around the other way. So we have to kind of clip into the seam to release the tension. Now, normally, you'd layer this. Now, by layering, it basically means that you are trimming one side mm -hmm. slightly more than mm -hmm. the other. But I'm not going to bother with that because what I want to do is just snip in. Now, this is, again, really important. What you want to do is to make sure that you put enough snips in and that you go all the way up to your line of stitching, but not through it. So I don't know if you can see there. OK. And a way to check that you've got enough snips is to pull your stitching line out and it should just they should all it should just be able to go straight now that one's just a little bit tight so I can pop another snip in there just to release that tension off I'm just going to quickly go around there now under stitching which is what we've got on the cilia as well now, it doesn't matter which version you do with the cilia whether you choose the frills or not mm -hmm. just to get that nice neat finish around the neckline you're going to need to under stitch it now, there are lots of different ways, and I've seen people do it in all kinds of different ways. This is the way that I prefer to do it. So we're going to do it from the right side, and it looks a little bit tricky, but it's not too bad. And we want to make sure all those little bits mm -hmm. are over towards the facing. And we're going to slide that under there. They should stay there if they're behaving. They should stay there, yes. Now, you won't get right into the corner, so give yourself about you know, a good couple of inches away from the corner. And what we want to do is to make sure, lift it up, so all those little bits underneath there are just poking out towards the right. So they're sitting underneath your facing. And we're going to hold that flat and follow the curved line of the facing round. And we're going to sew, literally, a, a scant couple of mils away from that seam line. And what this does is it just holds all of that seam allowance in place and helps the facing to sit nice and neat underneath. So I'm just lifting it up and checking to make sure. And what I'm doing is I'm following the curve of the facing and bunching up the rest of the garment. There we go. I'm just going to go that far just to show you, but obviously you'd go all the way around the neckline. So you can see on the right... There we go. So where we've popped. So when you've, once you've stitched it, I'm just going to trim that corner off a little bit more. There we go. You can turn that through. 
and you get a really super clean finish to the centre back of your dress. I don't know if you can see that there. Yeah, there yeah. There we go. So your understitching now is holding that back neck in place. If I hold that up there. So yeah. what you should be able to see once you've pressed it all is that you've got a tiny bit of the front of the garment being rolled over, over the top, to, so the, so to the top. So it's so, so clean, so you don't even see exactly. that edge. You don't so see any from the, the right seams. side, you don't see anything at all. Ah, oh, lovely. And once you've got that all pressed and neat, it's a really lovely way. So which is basically what we've done here. So we've got the understitching there. And you can just see, just but a tiny little bit, it, down, yeah. it helps it to kind yeah. of roll under. Oh, that makes sense. And with the facing taken back and the zip, and the lining taken back away from the zip, it just gives it a really nice clean finish. Okay, and how hard is it to do these ruched sleeves? They're so easy. The trick with gathering is uh, use two or maybe even three rows of gathering stitches. Okay. Now, what you'll have is you'll have two rows within your um, seam allowance. So on here, you've got the instructions there that go through and they show you you've got a double row of, of gathering stitches there. But what you can do is if you've got a really tricky fabric is to do a third row. So you've got your seam allowance here, which is um, about a centimeter and a half. So you try and get those two rows inside your seam allowance and then do a third row that's maybe two centimetres away from the edge of your fabric mm -hmm. so that you actually have that one visible. Yeah. But what that does is it holds all the gathers in place. So you stitch between the channel mm -hmm. and you get nice neat gathers. So you don't get any bouncy bits of fabric or anything like that. Lovely. So that would work really well if you're working with um, a crepe or something like that yeah. that's got a little bit more bounce yeah, to yeah. it. Um, I tend to do it sometimes even for this because you get nice crisp gathers mm. then and it just looks yeah. really nice and neat. But all of the, the instructions All of this is all here. You'll have to come across um, and do the demo for this one as well because it yeah. is lovely, isn't it's it? It's a really nice one to do, It's actually. really nice to make and it's also, well, if you can have it with or without the um, ruffles. What do you call Just ruffles? The sorry. frills. Frills. Yeah. The frills. Yeah. You love it. Okay, so... I think we've covered everything, haven't we? If you've got any uh, messages for Jaws, again, please do get in touch with us, get in touch with her, and look forward to seeing all your finished makes. Thank you so much. Lovely, thank Lovely you. Lovely to meet you. And I will definitely be checking out all your classes. I'm definitely going to be <laughs> booking onto the dressmaking. Thank now you. Now I've got my basic skills with um, quilting and patchwork and stuff. That's it's it. all coming into to play now. So thank you ever so much. That's right. Fine. We'll see you next time. Thank, thank you. you. Let's have a quick look again at. The fabric. If you saw the first out, we bought you a brand new machine. So many of you have already taken advantage of the offer. Uh, it is available. You've not yet missed out. And we're offering it in a bundle with free threads. I find that so difficult to say. I have to concentrate so hard. Free threads. So it's £519, saving a massive £31.49. Uh, Half of the stock, I'm being told, is in the basket. And it really is that luxury item that will take your dressmaking to that final professional finish. We also have the overlocker bundle. Every time Julia's here, everyone goes crazy for the overlocker. Obviously, any dressmaker, uh, or if you've had a dabble in dressmaking, you know how important or how an overlocker will just take your projects to that end uh, professional result that you want. Still, only paying 2 95 postage, even though this is sent by Elna. This is an Elna um, overlocker machine. It's 269 pounds saving today. You also get Elna's guarantee with that, but it is sent out with our postage and packaging. Uh, so the patterns, has this one sold out? Miranda, I think Miranda's now sold out. So if you want Celia, I know that we haven't had a chance to really cover, cover it much. I promise we will make sure that we get uh, Jules back to do a demo on it because it is a great make. It's £16, so if you want to delve in and have a go, in the uh, instructions, it has all of obviously the pattern pieces, everything that you're going to need to know is there. Please do not risk leaving it in your basket for too long. It's all there with all of your instructions, all of your measurements and everything that you're going to need to know to make it. If you're after any top tips on dressmaking, well, this is the complete 
guide to dressmaking by Jules herself. I love it. It's so exciting, isn't it, that we get such incredible, incredible guests on the show uh, giving top tips live. But if you do want all of the top tips, they are here in the complete guide, a really comprehensive, gorgeous book. Another great gift for somebody. Uh, or just to have there in your workroom to think, right, I'm not sure how to do this, or I want to make sure I do this completely correctly. You can go to the complete guide of dressmaking. It will just take you to that next level. And it's really beautifully presented with lots of pictures, lots of instructions, and lots of top tips. Just 15.99. Now I've only got two minutes to just quickly run through the fabrics. This is the one that Jules was demoing with, and it's lovely, isn't it? We've got not, we haven't got anything else quite like this. It's that really soft cotton lawn fabric. Half a meter is 6.99. 18, 18 people have got this in their baskets and are yet to check it out. So please, please do check out. A lot of you have already checked out, so. Well done, I can't wait to see all the dresses that you've made. Please send in your photographs or put them onto the um, Facebook fan page. Now for the largest size, we think that you need six units, 2.9 meters or three meters. So you'll need six units. This is the one that was on the mannequin. I do love that really, really bold print. It's lovely, isn't it? Perfect for the summer. $6.99. Full half metre. There it is on the mannequin. The end result of that lovely dress. The Julia dress. We also have... Oh, I've got about 30 seconds. OK. This one. $4.99 for half a metre. After the break, by the way, we have got a brand new creative grid that everybody's been waiting for. What we're going to do, because I haven't got a chance to show you all these, they're all there on the website, anything, everything that we've um, showcased, everything that's been here is there on the website. So do make sure, that's that one, do make sure that you have a look on there. But Lucy's coming back with a brand new creative grid. It's our creative grid guru, Lucy Brennan, coming back with the pineapple creative grid. Uh, you're gonna love it, don't go anywhere. We'll see you after this. Follow us on Instagram. Search for our sewing quarter page and follow us to get our latest posts. Join us on Sunday the 27th of May for two hours of quilting with expert Jane Alcock. At 9am Jane demonstrates turned edge applique to create a grandmother's tulip block quilt. We have kits in four colourways incorporating pre-cuts from Tilda's new Sunkist collection, including vintage pink, misty mauve, sky blue and cool teal. Then at 11am discover the dynamic design possibilities of the Bargello quilt. We know how much you love this pattern, so have created a choice of multicoloured kits to suit everyone. Tune in for two techniques, two styles and two hours of creative quilting with Jane. Sunday the 27th of May at 9am and 11am only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 687. Hi, my name's Jo Carter and these are my top three tips. My first tip would be, even if you, your sewing room is normally a real mess, and mine always is, try and take the time to organise your fabric, your stash, into colour order, because being able to see it and have it there, meaning you can pick out the colours and have them to hand and try fabrics together, really does help when you're quilting, and it means you use all of your fabric and things don't get lost and forgotten about. My second tip would be try and get to know your sewing machine. So, Spend an hour or an afternoon trying out buttonholes and various stitches and just get to know what it can do because then when you've tried them you know you can bring things into projects and make life easier a lot of the time. And my third tip will be try and sew when there's somebody else around so that they can keep you supplied with fresh cups of tea so your sewing's not interrupted. <laughs> Join us on Wednesday the 30th of May for two hours with dressmaking guru Jenny Smith. 
At 8am, it's the return of Jenny's popular Hepworth pinafore pattern. Then at 10am, Jenny debuts her brand new pattern. The Riley Collection top and dress pattern is perfect for beginners with a gentle introduction to top stitching, bust starts and inseam pockets. All you have to worry about is deciding which fabric to mix and match from. A hand-picked selection of denims, cottons, chambray and linen. So tune in for stylish modern dressmaking with Jenny Smith Wednesday the 30th of May at 8am and 10am only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 687. Good morning, good morning. Hope you're having a lovely, what day are we? Friday? Friday, it's Friday. Um, we have got a lovely last hour as well because we've got a brand new creative grid. Love creative grids. They are brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, you've seen the pineapple mini creative grid before, but we've got the big one, which I know that so many people have asked for. We've got four kits. Um, all them singularly. Now, the first one, this one, makes the, the quilt that you've seen hanging up. In fact, this, this kit does make that size as well, which is great. Um, I think we've got a picture of it. There it is. Oh, I love it. It's a great block, isn't it? A really great, fun block. So these are the really bright, vibrant colours. Five and a half metres of fabric. Five and a half metres of fabric. There it is with the thread and the brand new creative grid tool, trim tool. So we will find out exactly how to use it with our creative grid guru, Lucy. Uh, we also have, of course, that's five and a half meters of fabric. You get the grease, two meters of nude, a meter and a half of coral, half a meter of magenta, half a meter of is that lime, citrus? I think that's citrus. This might be lime. Half a metre of lime, half a metre of grass. You get your thread and your pineapple trim tool. Uh, the next kit. These are your more sort of warm tones, aren't they? The oranges and creams and I love this one. So once again, you do get the pineapple trim tool. They are great, honestly. They are designed and made by quilters themselves. So they really, really do have so many great, um, what's the word? They have, yeah, lots of great uses, lots of great features that are fantastic for quilters. Uh, so on this one, you get two meters of beige, one and a half meters of pumpkin, half a meter of, is it latte? Cappuccino, close, close, close. Half a metre of cream. Half a metre of beige, no. <laughs> that's not beige, that's beige. Bright orange, yellow orange. Hmm? Vienna orange. <laughs> Vienna orange, and this one's bright orange with the thread and the tool for 56.99. The purples, purples and pinks. Uh, again, five and a half metres. You get a lot of fabric, five and a half metres of fabric. So this one's two and a half metres. Sorry, two metres of glacier grey. A metre and a half of claret. A half a metre of slate. Half a metre of real purple. <laughs> real purple. I think it's real purple as opposed to purple, you know, fake purple. Um, baby blue, half a metre and half a metre of forest fruits with thread. And, of course, the ruler. Um, the last kit has got the spray as well, right? This is called Paloma. Two metres of... We have to find out what the fancy names are. I can't just call this yellow, can I? Because it is called 
Lemon. <laughs> oh, it's the same colour as my top. Metre and a half of port. Half a metre of deep orchid. Half a metre of sherbet. Half a metre of bright yellow. And half a metre of spray thyme Christmas red with your lemon thread and your creative grid. Now, if you do want it by itself, if you just want to get the um, pineapple trim tool by itself, it is brand new today. We'll find out how to use it exactly and what it will create. You can see the photographs there, the pictures there. Uh, 1999. Right, let's go and find out more about it. Hello, hello, hello. Right, it's got so fast today, hasn't it? I know, it? We're so in the last quickly. hour. And it's down to you that we've got this in, isn't it? Because yes. you've been asking. It's entirely and asking. down to me. Yes, it is. <laughs> it you've is. Asked no, about, I have and been asking. And a lot asking. of people have asked for it. Yeah, because I've used the mini pineapple trim tool before, yeah. which I love. Um, but quilters generally like making bigger yeah. blocks. So this is great. It's a brilliant size. You can do six inch, eight inch and 10 inch blocks brilliant. with this one. So I made 10 inch blocks um, in the quilt behind me. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that today. And also where you would stop if you were making them slightly smaller. Um, so it's just a lovely one. There is so, it, it is one block that you mm -hmm, make with mm -hmm. this, just the one block. But depending on where you put the fabric, you it can, can get lots of variations yeah. and it can look completely different. So um, if I can show you on this one, I've used one fabric mainly as the sort of background yeah. and then created um, the, these sort of spikes of the yeah. pineapple yeah. Um, in the pinks and greens. And then because of how I've arranged them, you've got like the line of the green mm. and the line of the yeah, pink running really through well. it. So. Um, but it, you don't have to go with that pattern. There are lots of different yeah. variations yeah. of it depending on where you put the fabric. Okay, so now I know you said you're going to try and get a block through, but there's a lot of pressing. There's a lot of it's... pressing and folding, so okay, we'll so see we'll, how far, we'll see I, get. How far I, will, I get. I will try and try and do a 10-inch one. Now, before we talk too time. much of, about it, I just want to quickly mention this, because you think initially, oh, that's just a little tab that comes with the grid. Yes. It's actually really useful. Don't throw it yeah, away. Yeah, no, it's really important because that is the instructions. And even now, having made, you know, quite a few of these uh, sorts of blocks, I still look at the instructions yeah. to make yeah. sure I'm, I'm doing the right step as I'm going along. And in fact, haven't they numbered? They've even... Yeah, it's all numbered. It, it's so... I mean, these instructions are incredible. You, you can't get any clearer. It really, it makes an awful lot of sense. They also have their own um, video that accompanies it, that, and there's a code on there, and also the, the um, uh, site that you can go and visit, yeah. so you can... Um, follow along with that as well but it's you know really incredibly well thought out very easy and the accuracy of this is phenomenal that's why you use rulers isn't it is yes. to get the precision yeah because okay. it, it is difficult when you're working with strips to have it behave how you want it and if I weren't using this I would foundation paper piece a block like mm -hmm. this in order to get that accuracy with it and if you go off I mean, it doesn't, you know, it's one of those things, it doesn't really matter, mm -hmm. but you can lose some of the pattern if, you, if you're not careful with it. So. Okay, so we've got enough fabric in this bundle to create. Yeah, that, that with, the, with the backing and, Brilliant. and the binding, but if you just wanted to make blocks, you can make more Brilliant. Uh, uh, blocks if you're not using. And it, or, the thing is, it's tricky with a block like this because it would depend where you put the fabric. Mm -hmm. So the one that you've got more of would be like what you would use for the background, background. and the backing but then you may want to have your own variation of that. So it's difficult to say exactly yeah. how many blocks because it depends how people arrange the fabric. Right, okay. But you'd be able to make a, a nice size quilt. Um, it just depends on how you want to position your fabric within that. So I'm gonna do one that's slightly different today. I'm going to do it um, more like it is uh, in the diagram. That, um, comes with the booklet and I'm going to have each round be the same colour so on the one behind me I've gone um, so the rounds are the sections around the central square so your first round I've done the background the second round I've used the green and one from like the yeah, the warmer cool. colours 
and so you know and so on all the way through but i'm going to do this one slightly differently so okay just to give you another variation of it brilliant okay right we need to get started okay so the first thing that you're going to do is um cut a central square so you want to decide you may not you may want to have your blocks all have different um central squares in the one um, that's on display I went for a dark green in the center for this one I'm going with the palest color in the center just to change it up because mm -hmm. I like to do that yeah um so I've gone for the lightest one and you cut that at two and a half inch squares and it's very important that it is two and a half inches and then you're going to cut a range of strips from the fabric um, and they can be at least one and three quarter inches wide um, I tend to cut a little bit more generously. This is than even that. written on the ruler. It's written on the ruler. I, I didn't actually where, remember that yeah, from my I mind. Where are you reading this from? And it's <laughs> literally yeah. on the ruler. It's on the ruler, which does make it really easy. So when you've done it a few times, yeah. you don't have to look at the instructions because it will start to, you know, yeah. and, and just as a reminder to yourself when you're cutting, it is just written there. Cut strips at least one and three quarter inch wide, centre square cut two and a half inches. Brilliant. So when I'm cutting my strips, I do tend to go a little bit wider just because I like to have that leeway. But if you want to be, you know, a bit more thrifty with your fabric, you can cut them one and three quarters. You'll still have a bit to trim. OK. OK. So as I'm demonstrating, if it seems like I'm trimming a bit more, it's because I've cut my strips wider. How many strips do we need to cut? It's hard to say because you're using them as you're right. doing so it. So <laughs> yeah, just cut. A, what you can do, it depends on where you want the fabric to go. So decide what colours you want in each block. Just cut a strip of each colour and see how you get on. And then you'd be able to calculate how many you need to make it the size that you um, want. Would. But obviously, because everybody might want to do it slightly differently. Yeah. Um, so you cut out your strips. And just decide, you know, and I, I'm going to be really honest, the edges of my fabric weren't even. Right. So they weren't meeting perfectly when I cut my strips. So one edge is a nice, clean, rotary cut strip. And the other edge, you can see that one there is not uh, perfectly straight. And that doesn't matter. So long as you've got one straight edge, you use that edge to sew, you're going to be trimming off the other side anyway. So you don't need to worry too much about okay. cutting out perfectly either which is quite great nice. yeah yeah so um to begin with we're going to take the central square and we're going to sew strips around it you can either sew around like literally all the way around or you can sew two strips either side and then two top and bottom which is the way I prefer mm -hmm. to do it but if you wanted to go around you can it's neither here nor there really I think but um that's up to you. So because I know my square is two and a half inches, the first strip I can measure to cut. And then after that, we just sort of wing it a little bit, which I like. Yeah. <laughs> I'm quite happy doing that. So if I just cut those to two and a half, then I know I can sew those either side and that's going to be um, perfect. So for this block, you're using um, a scant quarter of an inch seam. What's that? So, have we talked about it before? I don't think so. No. no. So, a scant quarter of an inch is just slightly less right. than quarter of an inch. So, I've just got the regular foot um, here on my machine. You can use your quarter inch foot if you want to. You just want to move the fabric slightly to the left. OK, so rather than it be a full quarter of an inch where I'm lining it up with the edge of the foot, I'm just going to reposition it ever so fractionally away so that it's a scant quarter of an inch. And we'll see how accurate I am when we, <laughs> when we come to fold it out. But I'll talk about what to do if you haven't got it accurately. OK. So some people might mark this on, the, on their um, machine. Or if you like me, you just do it. And then if it's not quite right, we can fix it afterwards. So I'm just going to sew those pieces um, either side, first of all. And then we'll give it a press and I'll sew the other, the next ones on. And if I was making lots of the blocks at this point, I would already start chain piecing. Right. So I would just be doing 
the first one on, yeah. Or, yeah. you know, for however many blocks I want to make. Um, so if you just give that a press, just like that. I always press the seams away, away. from the um, central square. As you're doing your rounds, you can, if you prefer, just finger press. It's okay to just finger press. Um, so long as you press after you've done a complete round. But just for this first one, because this is where the accuracy is really important. I'd rather press it. Don't be scared, it's fine. <laughs> You've done great. It'll be okay. <laughs> She's this like, do I have to press it? it? <laughs> so this is where it's really important. No, but we can check it before we do anything else. So if it's wrong, we'll just fix it. It's yeah. <laughs> no problem. In fact, we can actually check it now um, just to see. Okay. So just to make sure that our seams are running. Yeah along the seam line. Perfect. So we know that that, obviously I haven't sewn anything top or bottom, but we can just check that the seam is accurate right. um, for that. Okay, so we're doing well. So when it comes to the next strips, because you're gonna be trimming things off, you don't need to measure this, okay? Because it's gonna get cut back mm -hmm. anyway. So I just line it up against the strip of the fabric and just cut. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. And then I'm going to sew these strips top or bottom. So again, like I did before, I'm going to work from this side because I would rather see that my seams are going to stay in place as I'm sewing. And all the way through, I'm using that scant quarter of an inch. And what it means is it's just maintaining the accuracy of the seam. So um, it's, account, it's allowing for the thread so that it allows for the thread and the pressing so that it actually is a like a proper yeah, quarter of an yeah. inch. So that's one, and then I'll do the same. And obviously when you're working with the solids, there is a right and a wrong side, but it doesn't really matter because the color is the same on both sides. So um, even more freeing if you're making this block in yeah. uh, just solids, you don't yeah. have to worry about uh, matching right sides together. We've had a message come through from Hayley. Can I just say how beautifully the fabrics and kits come packaged? Fabulous, loving the tutorials from Hayley and Kent. They do they come do. really beautifully packaged, they don't do. they? They do. They're put together that. so nicely. Are you okay? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at me, confident. Thank you. Right, up and down. Mm? So not wiggling, just up and up down. Up and That's down. That's it, yep, just up and down. Okay. Because if, um, if you wiggle like you would when you were ironing, yeah. you can distort the seam. Right. Whereas if you press up and down, you're just literally pressing it, making it lie flat, and you're keeping that seam nice and straight. So just check again. So just check. So, we, yeah, we can just check that square. There we go. So I've probably been ever so slightly cautious there. If your square at this point is not sitting along those lines. If your square is inside those lines, you need to unpick okay. and make your seam slightly... Um, Larger. Yes. Or vice versa, if it's um, too big, because everything is based off this central square. Mm -hmm. So if those seams aren't right, then... It throws it for the it, off. It throws it off. So um, if the seam was out, if it was out here, I can just go back and just sew another seam, you know, inwards of that one to, to get, get, yeah. get the line um, correct. So that's a, it's a good tip just to check that that central square is fitting. It can be any of these, doesn't matter which one, so long as that's, the seams are lining up mm -hmm. exactly with that um, line, then you know you're on track. Brilliant. Okay. So once you've got that sussed, it's a breeze. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. There's the kit that we're using, by the way. It's there on the screen. And it does include the trim tool as well. Brand new today. It's brand new today. I'm doing a little happy dance. <laughs> um, so following the instructions, I don't know if you want to hold it up. Um, yeah. It's, you're, you're going in rounds. So a round is what I've just done, where I've sewn fabric all the way around the square. That's why it's a round. And then you're going to cut either on the angle or on the square, OK? So sewing round one, you can see there it says cut round one, angle. 
So I've sewn round one, and when I cut it, I'm going to be cutting it at an angle. And then it says sew round two, cut round two, corner. So that's referring to how you're going to use the ruler as you're cutting. Okay. Okay. So cutting it at an angle is what gives us um, that angle. Where, <laughs> how have you lined this up then? So Where I'm turning it up? into a square. So it's the centering the square. square round one yeah and i'm cutting it at an angle so what's really important is that my square is within that square yeah and where it says quarter inch seam allowance i'm not cutting off the point of the square because if it was here i'm going to lose the yeah know, the, if it was the like that the i'm going to lose the tip of the square so you want to make sure that's really nicely lined up and that you're not going to lose the point and this okay. is what makes this is what separates it from doing it with, with any other method yeah. so then i'm just going to trim all of the um corner sections so i just so you can see at this point i'm wasting a, a fair bit of fab fabric but as you go but i out, have cut these yeah. wider than recommended yeah. so i'm just going to remind you of that um and also i think it's worth it for the result that you get so each time just turning it round, making sure that's perfectly lined up and you can see that that seam is along that line and just trimming this as we go so do that for all the corners it's great. I was thinking this is gonna. This looks very complicated, but yeah. it's actually not no, at all. No, it's not. And once you've got the hang of it, it really is so simple. So that becomes the centre of our pineapple. That literally becomes this part. Yeah. Square. See. No! <laughs> I still can't see it! I know! Oh, it yes, just, that Yeah, part. do you okay. see? Yeah. Yeah, if I hold it side by side, that makes it easier. So it becomes that point. So it's, it's like I've set... It's like on point how you've created it, which is why it feels yeah. weird. Yeah. Um, so now I'm going to sew the next round. So unlike in the one behind me where I've used different colours on different sides, I'm just going to go for one... Um, one colour on all the sides, okay? So I can trim off those uh, selvages. And then again, now you may want to measure this side because you know it's got to be the same length as, you know, if I'm gonna sew on each side, it needs to be the same length, but I'm just gonna- Just go just for it. Guesstimate, yeah and just do that because some of it is going to get trimmed off anyway and then just repeating the same thing sewing another round on either side and this way um if i sew it with the seams facing up i can see the point at which the point is created so where the seam lines intersect mm -hmm. that's where i want this seam to be to get it um, you know, so I'm not going to lose that point. I don't want to go over that seam. But if I'm sewing a scant quarter of an inch, it should work out perfectly, she says. <laughs> and I don't need to do um, a back stitch as I start because you're going to be trimming it off anyway. So There's it's no just point. a bit of a waste of time to be um, doing a back stitch. So then when you fold that back, you'll see you've not lost your point by sewing it that way you're maintaining you, the point of that what will be a square i understand okay. so do you need to keep pressing each um well i'm going to do either side and, and then, then you, do, you can i can just one. finger press and then we'll yeah. press the round because that's the way i do it when i'm making it um rather would than you pressing do it each time. pressing though each time or do you tend to do a block and then press all i out? i do a round yeah and then press it and you always start from the center then you'll always start at that yeah. center point and work out and out and always. out. yeah, yeah. It's, the only, it's the only way okay it's the only way so that's that bit and then so this is the point which, at which i just some finger pressing get rid of that 
Okay, so just finger, you can press this if you would prefer. I just give it a good finger press and then line that up with that and cut. And then I'm gonna repeat and sew this to either side. And again, I'm gonna work with this side facing up so that I can check that I'm not um, missing that point. And again, if I've been over cautious, and I can see, um, you know, say I can see too much of the like yeah, beige yeah. fabric there, I would just go back in and sew another line mm -hmm. very close to this seam line so that when I've opened it up, I've just encroached slightly and, and I maintain that nice point. So it's a really easy one to avoid to adjust, having to adjust, problems yeah, and yeah, to yeah. adjust it. Yeah, exactly. So I'll just line this one up and then again, just a scant quarter of an inch. And it's fun at this point because this is, so that's what you can see what I mean about mm -hmm. the seam because it just was trying to flip back then. But whereas if I'd pressed that, it wouldn't, it does make it a little easier. But for time's sake, I'm just gonna just go keep for going. It. The most popular kit at the moment is the Sangria. Which is the purples. Oh, yeah, there we nice. go. There it is. That's the most popular at the moment. It is lovely. And that, of course, does include the brand new trim tool. Remember, it's one pin pee all day. So if you've already bought something today, then please do continue to check out of your basket. Um, as we don't want you to miss out on anything all day long. It's been very, very busy today. Yesterday was really, really busy as well, wasn't it? Well, you, you went here yesterday. No, you I wasn't. Today tomorrow. Yeah, today and tomorrow, yeah. I was wondering why it was going slow. It, the speed had turned <laughs> down. So I've just flipped it back up, so I'll be a bit quicker. OK, so th at this point, I give it a press again. And I, sometimes I do just finger press so yeah. I know it's going in the right, you know, way. And you would do it this way as opposed to doing it that way? Yeah, if you do it this way, the, the issue is you can sometimes press and then you've caught the fabric here and you create... Okay, you so just so I mean? you can see... So if you do it on top, you can just push a, slightly with the iron yeah. just to get it, you know, so that it's going to stay nice and straight. But if you do it from that side, you can do it from this side. You just want to pull this to make sure you're not... Okay. Uh, creating a pucker on yeah. the on the okay. front, but everybody will probably have their own way of pressing. <laughs> Mine was ironing. <laughs> it's all right. We're all learning. There yeah. we go. Yeah. Okay. Lovely. <laughs> Beautiful. So now you can see how it's starting to um, form, and then when we when we make the next cut, rather than cutting. Um, at the angle like we did b before we're going to cut from the corner so a good way of checking is just to lay it on the block if i was to cut it like that i mean i can't cut it like no, that it doesn't make no. sense so the, the really nice thing is these rulers are very logical mm -hmm. in that it's difficult to make it go wrong without going hang on if i'm going to cut that no, you need to go that is going to make a mess and if i cut it like that there'd be no yeah. point in sewing no, those no. ones on and so we know that we're on round two. Okay. Th this was round one, one and this two. is round two. And it's clearly all the rounds are labelled very clearly on the um, ruler itself. So what we can do now is just line up. See, I may have gone slightly too much with these. Line up these seams along here and make sure that your central square is centered okay a lot of people are taking advantage of just the ruler as well it's under 20 pounds and if you look after them don't i know so many people i've seen on the facebook fan page i've got them all nicely stacked all in yeah or hanging up they've got mine the, um, i'm hang mine yeah yeah some of the some of the larger ones i have um just stored upright yeah, yeah. Um, against a wall with nothing with stuff in front of them so they don't fall down. And then the rest of them I um, 
hang up. Yeah, if you look after them, they last a lifetime. They oh, are absolutely. Great investment. Yeah. And I love the fact that they've got the grips on as well, so they're not going to slide, are they? No, it's got that inbuilt grip. So all around the edge of where the seam allowance is, you've got the grip, and then all of these uh, circular bits are grip as well. So unlike this one where you have to cut each angle, when you do the corner, you only need to move the fabric that once. Um, to get it square. So now you can see it's a square within a diamond within a square. Yeah. So the pineapple is it's starting to, is take, starting to, take to shape. form. Now, um, even though it says you can do a six, an eight and a 10, you could finish there if you wanted. Yeah. If you wanted to just make a smaller project yeah. and a square within a square is like an, it's called an economy block. You could just do that one if you wanted. You know then that every single one is going to be precise. So for the pineapple block, it's making you six, eight, ten. But Actually, you know, if you just wanted to have this be a yeah, block, yeah, you, yeah. you know, you could. Although it's small, but you know, so there are, perfectly formed. There small, are four rounds. Right, four. Because there are four rounds, aren't there? One. There two, are ten. Three, there's ten rounds. Ten rounds. So how do you repeat ten, it? Are there ten or the eight? Yeah, I think there's 10 rounds in that, or nine, oh, well, I'm going to forget. Nine rounds in the 10 inch block. No, eight rounds and then corners. Okay. <laughs> Technically. So in the instructions it shows you, so completing the um, six inch block, you're doing four rounds and then you're adding the corners. Eight inch block, you're doing seven rounds and then you're adding the corners and the 10 inch, you're doing eight rounds and then you're adding the corners. Okay. So we'll see how far so I get. Going, and then if I run out of time, I'll have to make a smaller block. Um, so again, just repeating it. So I'm going to trim so off So you don't, still don't need to worry about is. cutting too much, just as long as it's the size of the, the square that you've got now. Yeah. So, so it. it's just the first ones when you're doing it either side, you want to be the same okay. width. But then from beyond, I mean, you can cut them longer, but then you'd have to Okay, so I, I cut these ones the same. You could have them be a bit longer and then trim it back after you've pressed it. Mm. Um, or you could attach the other fabric over the top if you don't mind sewing over fabric. It just depends how you, you know, feel most comfortable. But I'm not measuring that, I'm just eyeballing it yeah. and that it works out fine doing it that way. So it's just up to you. You, you sort of find your own rhythm with it of how you want to you know, how you want to do your piecing. But the effects that you can get with pineapple blocks are so stunning. And there are some really, really incredible um, quilts and incredible secondary patterns that you can get from, right. um, from, the pineapple. from the pineapple blocks. Yeah, just from the fabric placement. So what's the so, difference in the small one? It's literally a smaller version of it or? Um, yeah, just do the blocks are smaller. Okay. So you just can make different size. Um, oh, fact, blocks. that was this one. They're saying it's behind you. That's the uh, the small one. Is this one in stock then at the moment? Yeah, so if you do want the smaller, this is four, five and six inch blocks you can make. I tell you what, the uh, value for money as well on that large one, this is 24.99, so it's up to you, whichever one you prefer. If you want to do the small ones, it's four, five, six inch. Or the large ones, 19.99. Okay. Okay. So just guesstimating. It. <laughs> it does make it really easy though. Not having to measure out all the mm. pieces makes it much, much quicker. Oh, I find that the hardest thing yeah. is the cutting and the measuring. I can get quite stressed out doing strips and thinking, how oh, I'm sure I've just done it this size and yeah. it's not quite right. I did just, when I was eyeballing that those strips, I did just make them slightly smaller, but I'm just going to hide that in my seam <laughs> allowance. So you can do that, but you'll get used to it. The more that you're doing, the more you'll discover where, you know, where's the right place to cut. And if you're um, not a fan of rotary cutters, you can be cutting these strips with scissors. Mm -hmm. I'm just using the rotary cutter because that's what I'm used to. Yeah. But if you wanted to just be cutting them as you're yeah. sewing, you, you absolutely can. We've got a message come through from Jill. Uh, Lucy, what are you doing to my bank account? Just had to buy the purple <laughs> bundle. Silly nanny, Jill. Jill. You'll love it, Jill. 
You will. You will. You'll love it. James also messaged in. Hi, Lucy and Vicky. Great demo as usual. Lucy got my ruler and can't wait to get started. Yay. That's Jane in York. I love the fact loads of people up and down the country all loving the creative grid. And Shelley, Michelle. Uh, Shelley in Lincolnshire, morning, got my kit, new to quilting. Can I use my rotary and cutting, sorry, my rotating cutting mat to trim? Yes, you can. Yep, you can. Um, let me just have a think about it. So you'd cut and then you'd turn and then you'd cut and then you'd turn and then you'd cut and then you'd turn. Yeah, so you wouldn't be having to, you wouldn't move, be moving the fabric while you're cutting. So you can. Do you, yeah. okay, thanks. Fine. Oh, look, you're on a roll. Thank you. <laughs> I might as well. Yeah, lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. So and it does help. Check again. My ironing board and irons in my kitchen. So yeah. every time I have to, I'm like running back and forth, which is good exercise, and I also need it. Um, but there is a lot of, you know, you better even, have it set up next. Yeah, to you, or yeah. even if you do have like a mini one of the iron. mini irons, you know, it is useful to have it um, just there so that you can do it because obviously there is a lot of. Yeah. You know, but all equally, if you're chain piecing, you can do a whole round and then press all your <laughs> blocks. And if you're making more than one block, it makes sense to do each round at a time rather than doing each block yeah. individually, because then you're cutting the same bit out every time. So you kind of know where you're up to. Um, so this is where it becomes um, slightly. Bit. Yeah, it just changes slightly a slightly so um the third round let me get this right one two yeah three. this is round three yeah so round three we're again going to cut um on the angle where's so, round three then well what rounds three five and seven yeah so we're not actually um centering the square for this one we're just looking at uh, this line here and like I said originally what's most important is that we're trimming um, this back and not losing the, the point. um, points yeah so just check that the white line hang on am I getting this right no we're cutting it off that there sorry um we are cutting off the point this time so unlike last time forgive me unlike last time we had to be careful not to cut off the point. This time, we're actually cutting off the is point. Is this where this So it comes feels in. like it's wrong. Okay. Okay, which is why it gets me every time. Yeah. Because it feels <laughs> like it's wrong. But you're right, you're not wrong. And the way that you tell is cleverly on the ruler, it says angle trim line rounds three, five, and seven. There is no square to center on here, okay? So we're literally lining up this line with the line of the triangle and you're going to trim off your point. So it feels wrong, but mm -hmm. can we show on the quilt? Mm -hmm. So these points here and why I was stressing why that center square is so important, you don't want to lose those points. It looks much neater to have that be a perfect um, square. And the same thing on that first round, okay? So this pinkish bit, we want to keep those points there. The next round, can you see? Yeah. You don't have it, you yeah. don't have a point, it's cut off. And so from here on in, it changes. Okay. Okay. So we just line that up with the white line. And then what feels horribly wrong. <laughs> But just we, a tiny point, because we cut that it off. looks like you've got quite a lot of the point cut off, but you do yeah. just line it up with that. Yeah, you just line it up with that. And you can send, you know, if you want to have it centred, you can do that as well. But you're just lining it up with that angle. OK, just before you move on to the next bit, yes. let's just quickly run through the bundles. Uh, I know that we're whizzing through this and we're running out of time, though. It's 22. So the first one um, is the one that's... On the wall, hanging on the wall, you've seen the uh, finished quilt. This is enough fabric to make that size, which as a finished quilt is nine, nine blocks. So you get two meters, five and a half meters in total, you get two meters, um, well, five and a half meters in total, so you get half meters, and it's just how you place it that you will have enough to create um, that finished quilt. You get your creative grid, the brand new one, and you get a pink thread. 
There it is. Finished on the wall. The one that we're working with today is the, these lovely warm, warm tones. Really, really lovely. So not only, again, do you get the pineapple trim tool, you get the bright pineapple bundle. Five and a half meters of fabric. That's two meters of the beige, which is for your, is there enough then for your background, your backing and binding? Yeah. Yep, amazing. Sangria. Oh, I'm so pleased, this is the most popular. We love our sangria. So, um, over half of the stock has now gone. This is, same again, five and a half meters of fabric. If you have got it in your basket, then please do start checking out. You get your thread, you get your trim tool, and all of this lovely, lovely, lovely solid fabric. The last option is called Paloma. So you get, once again, the brand new trim tool, brand new pineapple trim tool. You get the lemon thread and you have Paloma Pineapple Quilt Kit, 58.99. If you want the trim tool by itself, then you can, it is there, it's on the website. In fact, we'll run the graphics through again. You get the trim tool with the instructions included. They're there in the sleeve, but they're also there actually physically on the ruler, which is great for 19.99 or the smaller one was available as well, which is on the website. Please do check out, please, please, please do check out. Okay, thanks Jesse. Okay. So from <laughs> here on in, it's even simpler in a way because we, have, we don't have to worry so much about yeah. the central square. We are still lining up the central square, but we know that it's right. So um, that just makes things quicker. And also when we're sewing the seams, um, we don't have any points to worry about. So I still sew with this side facing up so that I'm making sure all my seams lie flat, but I don't have to worry exactly about um, where my seam is. But I still want to sew with that, that um, scant quarter of an inch. Okay. We've got about 13 minutes. Okay. Is that a good? Oh, okay. mm, well. I didn't sound too panicked. Uh, uh, um, well, I can only go as, you know, you can only do well, it as quickly as you can do it. Well, even if we have to do it a little smaller, then we'll show yeah, the corners. Because yeah. yeah. the, are the corners different then? Yes, the corners are different. Yeah. Okay, so I've gone with the brighter orange just to brighten things mm -hmm. up a little bit. Nice and cheery. Have you picked which colours you're... Have you already done this placement or are you just... I'm going just for making it? it up as I go along. <laughs> yeah. Which you can, do, you know... I mean, I did for the one that was behind me, um, I did think about the, the layout and how I wanted it to look um, overall. And there's a, you know, there's a lot of um, um, modern pineapple quilts, traditional vintage um, pineapple quilts that you can look for inspiration for different types of layout. Um, because it really does make a, make a difference to the overall look, which fabric you put where. Yeah, yeah. And when you um, put, the, put the blocks together, it, you know, you, that becomes more apparent. Okay. So, uh, you know, a block on its own doesn't have quite the same impact. It's still beautiful, and but it doesn't have quite exactly the same And you repeated it exactly the same impact. colour on each block? No, no. it's random. There you go. Can oh, you yeah, see? of course. Yeah, yeah, it's random. So I split it, for that one that's behind me, I split it into like colour groups. So I had yeah. the greens oh. and, the, and the pinks and the backgrounds. So it was like three piles of um, strips, really, that I, was, that I was working with. But I'm doing it more like the, you know, like the layout that's in the um, yeah 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 the picture where the each round is would be like the same colour. So this is diff the one I'm sewing now is different from the one that's behind me. But the only difference is where I've got the two sides, I would have done those say in pink, and then the the longer ones I would have done in green, and I just kept doing that um, each time so that the opposite colours would have been the, from the same pile. Okay. 
not explaining that very you well. Are, Hopefully I it makes sense yeah. if you look at uh, the one that's behind me. So now again, we're going, are we? Yeah. Number four, where does it say number four on here? Yeah, there. Yeah. Central. So again, it's like we're going back to the beginning and I may just need to do a little adjusting. But you're still chopping off the edges now. Yeah, so now I'm going to chop off the edges. So, so long as you've got that central square in the right place. And now that pineapple is starting to kind of take shape. You see it more yeah. now, don't you? Yeah, you see it more. Um, so I think I'd have to do one. No, I'm just trying to think about whether I need to add uh, corners in. I think I'll do one more. And four. Yeah, we've got, how long have we got? So, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. We can do it. Can we do another one? Well, that one's round four, cut the corners. I'm just thinking about it. Yeah, you must have to do another one, surely. We'll show some of the bundles. Yeah. There's one. <laughs> While I think about it. <laughs> the one mm. uh, that you've seen up here is beautiful. The one that Lucy's using is this one. Um, you get five and a half metres of fabric. And you can really see the colours coming together now, can't you? Really see the colours coming together. Five and a half metres of fabric. The thread as well to get you started. Um, and there's enough fabric to show the, to do the backing and the binding and the background as well. Marilyn. Morning, got my... No, love, loving the demo. Had to buy the purple kit. Thank you, Lucy. You're very talented. Thank you very much. The creative gig. <laughs> Guru. Uh, the purple kit has proven to be the most popular. It is the Sangria kit. It's 56.99. Remember to check out of your basket. Once everybody checks out, we are down to very, very limited stock. So please be careful. Right, have we okay, I've worked, worked it, out. it out? Yeah. Thank goodness for the instructions. <laughs> so if I'm going to do a six inch block, I'm going to finish on round four. Okay, so that's what I've just um, What are these? Done. These are... Those are 10, ten inch. inch. Yeah. Um, now, you could finish it there, and after round four, that's going to be a six and a half inch block. So if you wanted to do it that way, you can. But the thing about the pineapple blocks is what you can do is create the secondary. So where you thought was a block, mm -hmm. where you thought that yes, was the centre... Yes, that's what's crazy, isn't is it? ...is because what I've done is use the cent the colour that I put in the centre in the corners. So these are the rabbit ears, that's how they refer to them, which is the finishing um, corner section. So I've done that the same as the central square, so you get this diamond square effect running through the whole quilt. Mm -hmm. What I could have done is done that in another pink, yeah. you know, to keep that running yeah. through, and then this diamond would be a different colour. So that's what I'm talking about when I say the layout makes placing, a yeah. difference. So this to finish this one, it's slightly different. We're going to trim this again, but on the angle, and then we add the rabbit ears. OK, so I'm just trimming off like the corners, mm -hmm. really. Of um, You've just got that along this 45, yes. this white line here. Yeah. yeah. So just trimming that off. And then we're going to add the corner um, pieces. So the corner ones for this are two and a half by four. So I think they're two inch strips. So I'm going to cut those. I'm going to go for the other uh, brighter orange in the corners. So I would need to cut um, four two and a half by four inch pieces. Okay. okay, and this is just literally to put just um, you in it. the corner. Yeah, so I'm going to do, sorry, just what no, I don't no. want to <laughs> jab you <laughs> with the ruler. So I'm just going to cut them all at once. You would obviously, I would cut uh, four and a half inch strips and cut them from, from that if I was doing it properly <laughs> at home. But just for the sake of the demonstration. I'm just cutting those. And then all you do is add these 
into the corners. Right. Okay. So it seems like a lot. I think you cut the rabbit ears for the same size, um, depending on what you're doing. But it needs to be wider because you're going to square it up. The advantage of having them slightly bigger as well is it means when you're sewing it on, you don't have to be so precise. You can just sort of center it, yeah. you know, yeah. roughly um, in the middle of that strip. And then you're just again going to sew a scant quarter inch seam. We've got about five minutes. Okay. So I'm just going to work my way round. I'm not even going to fold it back because at this point the block's large enough um, that I don't need to be pressing it as I'm as I'm going. So even though... And also I've got five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, it, it isn't something that you can just do straight no. away. But it isn't, it isn't one of those quilts that is going to take endless hours, is it? This is, I like these nine block quilts that... Yeah, I mean, it depends how many blocks you're, you're going to do. They're not, you know, the 10 inch block takes a bit more time because you've got a few more yeah. um, rounds to sew. But I think it's worth the time it takes to sew this kind of a quilt. Yeah. And what I love about it as well is that you can make another one, put the fabrics in different places and have it come out completely, different. completely differently. Yeah. So I'm just going to finger press um, those. So at this point, it looks really odd, like mm -hmm. a sort of strange... Not pineapple. <laughs> Alien-y um, kind of a thing. And then we can just trim. <laughs> yeah, isn't that nice? Um, so we can just trim that off um, to make it square. Right, so where are you lining this up? I'm just, I'm just going to trim it. You could do this with, um, uh, you know, with a regular ruler if you wanted yeah. to. But or... you're not lining this up at, to anything in I particular? Mean, you... mm, no. No, that's no, fine. I'm just going to square it up. I might actually just use the ruler because that's big enough. To Sharon? Do six and a half inches. Oh, Sharon sent us a picture. Hi, Vicky and Lisa. This is my quilt using the mini version of the pineapple trim tool. Uh, I've worn, I have the one on today's show too. Need to find it and start creating with it. Great demos and advice, Lucy. That is fabulous. See, that looks again How completely different. How striking it is. Yeah, just it with looks the like different colourways, it does. That looks really good, I love that. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. This is what's great about seeing everybody else's pictures as yeah. well. Yeah, and it's nice seeing it as well, how you can, you know, that's such a modern looking quilt yeah. with the patches in yeah. the centre and then staggered around. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Was that just using two different colours then, creating that sort so. of spinning? Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So I just want to show you the advantage of using the pineapple trim tool versus anything else. I'm trimming this back. I'm trimming it to six and a half inches because that's, um, it's a finished mm -hmm. six inch block. Um, but just to show you, you can see how perfectly precise, I'm not losing any of the other fabric other than this section that I've just sewn because it creates, and the, the line's running perfectly through the, mm. through the square there. You just can't get more accurate than using the trim tool. It's so beautiful. And then if I was to make more of those blocks and have it on repeat, if I use the same colorways, I'm going to have a different pattern again because this would create a diamond yeah, yeah. there. And if you use the same colour strips, you know, I would ha in the next block, it would create a diamond with the orange strips. Yeah, because and then you'd have the beige ones. No they all just then uh, yeah. you literally then do exactly the same as you would with a normal. Yeah, normal and color. then just you just sew it into sew rows and sew, and sew the rows together. Yeah. Fantastic. That's it. Brilliant. Thank Yay. you so much. Thank you're you very so much. Welcome. Make the most of it. I know a lot of I've people have I've made a bit of a mess, it. but oh well. <laughs> I know it's fine. Um, you're back tomorrow, aren't you? I am back tomorrow, yes. Do we know what we're doing tomorrow? Doing that quilt there. <gasps> oh, lovely Tula as well. We love a bit of Tula, don't and we? And I'm doing some EPP, which I love as well. I don't so. think I've been on a show with you doing English Paper Oh, good. I'll teach you that yes. then. Yes. <laughs> lovely. Yes. <laughs> okay. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you. Right. Uh, we have got four bundles and of course you can get the trim tool on its own as well which I know so many of you have 
already got and checked out, but we will run through uh, the bundles first. Starting with the one that you've seen on the back wall all day long. Lovely rainbow of colour, five and a half metres in total. So you have two metres of your one that you would use as your background, and then it goes up to sort of half a metre one. So it depends on how you place your fabric. You will definitely have enough to create that finished quilt. Uh, there you go, with the thread and the trim tool as well. The next one is the one that Lucy's demoed with. Which again is beautiful, very, very bright and very vibrant. It was really coming together then, wasn't it? A lot of people need to check out though. Please do not miss out on this. If you've got it in your basket, limited on all of these bundles, you will get the trim tool, the thread and five and a half meters of gorgeous quality solid fabric. The most popular is the Sangria. We'll check on the stock because I think, uh, it is the most popular one that we've had. These lovely grapes and one's actually called um, real purple, real purple. There's forest fruits. There's the plum and violet. It's lovely, really, really lovely. Port, you get the thread, five and a half meters of fabric and the trim tool as well. And the last one's called Paloma. Paloma, this one with this is the only one that's got the spray time, the spray time fabric as well. So once again, five and a half meters, fifty-eight pound ninety-nine with the lemon uh, thread and your fabulous trim tool. Now, if you want it on its own, it's under twenty pounds. I think we were all quite shocked when we saw the price on this. Bearing in mind the smaller one was twenty four ninety nine, so this is a great deal. Lucy requested this one herself. She was. This is the reason that you're seeing it. Thanks to our creative grid guru, Lucy Brennan. Uh, all of the instructions are here. There's demos on how to use it on their website, and it really, really is fantastic. They're created by quilters. So all of their little features and functions are to make it really simple for you to get the most precise, beautiful quilt and professional finish. It's just 19 99 If you joined us with Jules at eight o'clock, then we brought a brand new machine, brand new to Sewing Quarter. I love the fact that we're still bringing, even though a year and a half old now, we're still bringing more and more and more uh, brand new gadgets. This is a luxury one though, this really is. This is for somebody who wants to take their dressmaking to that ultimate professional level. And we've bundled it with four th three threads. I've really struggled to say that, four three threads. Uh, it is a tongue twister, thank you. Uh, 31 pounds, 49 pence, saving on that one as well. So there it is, 590 pounds. I understand it's investment, but Jules was saying it's brilliant. It really, really is. I'm back tomorrow. I'm excited to see you tomorrow. So is Lucy as well. So do make sure you join us. Should we have a look at what we've got coming up? 8 a.m. The sun Spell. Oh, my voice. I'm so pleased that it's home time now because I can't talk. Sunspell mini quilt with Lucy. Quilting fabric bundles at nine o'clock. 10 a.m. We've got the honey bloom quilt, which you've seen on the back wall there. And 11 a.m. The designer patchwork fabric. So we're going to do it all again. Enjoy the replay. Have a bit of a watch back. And it's rainy and horrible today. So get in front of the sewing machine uh, and let us know what you get up to today, tomorrow. We will see you then. So thank you from all of us here at the Sewing Quarter. We will see you tomorrow bright and early at 8am. But until then, bye, enjoy your day. Tune in on Saturday the 26th of May for an hour of modern quilting with Lucy Brennan and her Honey Bloom design. Oversized petals are created with the help of the ingenious Creative Grids Roundup tool, then scattered from the centre outwards and appliqued in place. These large scale petals are perfect for showcasing intricately patterned fabric and we have a choice of three kits, each with their own standout prints. Choose from tea rose and turquoise, ebony and lime and raspberry and duck egg. So join us for an hour that's blooming with gorgeous fabric and clever tools. Saturday the 26th of May at 10am, only on Sewing Quarter, Freeview Channel 78 and Sky Channel 687.